Looty boy, Taylor gang. Man, dope. When you're coming up and you have visions and dreams and stuff like that, and you see other people achieving theirs with their hometown friends and a group that's pioneering some shit and going against the grain of what everyone says is okay or that you can do in your life, it's just special. So being able to reminisce and even just still see it going today, what it's evolved to is like, it gives everybody hope. And a lot of the reason people watch this show or anything like this show or any type of content is to connect, relate, and it gives people hope at the end of the day. It's inspiration that, oh man, this person dealt with a, you know addiction problem or this person dealt with this or this person dealt with that. So did I, and look where they're at. I can get there too. That's what it's all about. So bring it all full circle, man. Shout out to Looty Boy. Shout out to the whole Taylor gang. You guys are gonna love this one. Appreciate, you know, just the whole journey, man. This is dope. It's a full circle moment. We get a couple of these every so often, and that's what keeps you going. It's nothing else. It's just that reassurance of like, yo, keep going, don't stop, and stay, you know, stay in your lane, keep doing what you're doing because it's it's working. So, you know, all you guys watching this, we appreciate you supporting. Shout out to the whole First Smoke family. We wouldn't be able to still do this without you guys. So it means a lot. The support goes a long, long way for real. So make sure you guys come out, connect to any event we're at, wherever we pull up, any type of products we have, any of that. Hit us in DMs. We always answer DMs, all that. So we appreciate being able to um, connect with you guys and, you know, just share these uh, moments. Dope. Keep you doing it. Time to go to the gym. Yep. <laughs> Chevy was always into the same thing as a little brother. Like anybody with a big brother, you'd be like, I want to do that. He graduated and was selling drugs and I'd be waking up in the morning going to school. And I'm like, I couldn't wait to do that. He met Wiz, they linked, I met Wiz. Now I go to jail from 2005 to 2008. I'm in my jail cell, got MTV on my TV. And next video is Say Yeah by Wiz Khalifa. The video comes on and I'm seeing all my homies. And I'm looking at this shit like, this shit is about to be something. And then 2010, I'm off parole. Wiz has like a tour going, never look back. I had my years where God had me stop, which was when I was incarcerated, but I'm good now. Paid my dues, stopped when I was supposed to. Now I'm back and never quitting. Bitch. Hey, what's good, everybody? We're back again with another one's first smoke of the day. It's your boy Pat God's here in the building with Black Leaf as always. Big smoke today. Man. And you know, we got the Taylor gang in this bitch today. My man, Looty Boy. <laughs> yes, right sir. here live and direct. Yes, sir. You know me. It's the Looty, a.k.a. I roll the best doobies because smoking with me is always a movie. You understand me? <laughs> so, yeah. Damn. Damn, appreciate y'all for that. having me man i've been watching i've been tuned in i've been tapping tapping in like you guys are doing a hell of a job y'all killing it continue to do what y'all doing and yeah first smoke of the day we here finally finally man. we we, here. we we along with probably every other smoker in our age demographics been following what you guys have been doing yeah. since the fucking beginning uh I'll be the first to have said it on many episodes but i learned how to roll a joint with that video of whiz in the jacuzzi no lie. Like that was my yeah. turning point of like, all right, I'm done with the blunts. And then I got on, uh, you know, obviously Wiz and then obviously Currency. That was the era of like, man, I'm smoking joints. I'm smoking them all day. I'm running around listening to, uh, you know, pilot talk, like all these different oh. things that were just like, it was, it, 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 that was when my identity morphed more into like, yeah, this is like a way of life. Like you, you can live like this and you can, you could smoke weed all day and it started to become, a cool thing, not just like, it was breaking the stigma, at least for our age demographic and, and what we had going on. And then I remember me and this fool, we went to um, Mac Miller and a Wiz show in Orlando at UCF. And that shit was nuts. Powering I mean, down some local we were grown. We were like hiding joints and coming in. We walk <laughs> in and there's like smoke piling oh. over the top rafter. And we were just like, and he went to UCF. So we was like, bro, I've never seen it like this. This is so Oh, I used to make moves shit. at UCF. And I was like, what is going on here? We used to be like scared. We'd be smoking like and yeah. watching where the smoke goes and shit, let alone like the whole auditorium. Bro, we were high as fuck just from being in the crowd. 
It was crazy. How about so this? It was a dope ass experience, though. I saw them I'll in Colorado when Wiz dropped his first the album, Rocks. and they yeah, and, yeah. and they were or it was like an amphitheater too, and they were doing their first tour around where it was the first. I had buddies from Florida flying into Colorado to go to that concert because we could smoke there, and they were like, "We don't know how Florida's going to be," and we were out there cam, cam like I mean, it was the whole crew. Everybody was like, "That was right when legalization was yeah. rolling out." So monumental moments, man. Yeah, and just man. shout out to you and everything you guys do as just a crew. I think everybody wants to belong to a crew mm -hmm. of friends that are just having fun and doing what they love. And you guys really have like brought that to us is like, this is what it would look like. Man, I always get that like, you know, like out on the streets. Yo, Ludi, I remember you from day to days and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like that. I don't never take that shit for granted. That's just like a blessing for me being like from where we come from. You know what I mean? So it's just like random people saying, hey, Ludi, what's up? Nice to meet you. I seen you. What's up? Boom. No like animosity. No why you running up on me. I just don't be like giving off that type of energy unless you're just being like just hella aggressive or extra or weird. But to be a part of this was like, you know. It was like a blessing because I keep looking at it as like Wiz could have took anybody from our neighborhood, you know what I mean? But I feel like he grabs and, and got closer to the ones that wanted to do something different immediately, you know what I mean? Like me, my brother, Chevy Woods, like how I met Wiz, you know what I mean? So he could have picked anybody. He picked the group. We, do, we follow his lead. Did what we do, played our roles, boom, boom, boom. And then like, you know, here we here we are today, like type shit. So it's definitely a blessing. I I love being a part of the Taylor Gang. I smoke weed. Been smoking crazy weed like before I met Wiz. Loved weed before I met him, but it was just like when two niggas love weed and they get together and they meet, they go on like bond instantly. And yeah. That was like me and his bond. Him and my brother's mom was like music. Vibing out studio. Me and his shit, nigga, what, what you doing? Roll up, we trying to get high, let's go, boop de boop type shit. Like that's what me and him was like always, always on. Yeah, my love for weed is, it's almost close to like loving a woman. He said I almost. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's almost. I love you know, it. There's one thing it's close. Weed, there's one thing the weed is missing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. just like the girl, she she yeah. she wins with that extra thing that she has actually, but not if she wants you to quit quit the weed. Yeah, that is disrespectful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if anybody woman comes into my life or hits me up from here on on, like mm -hmm. you have to know weed is involved. I'll I know how to move newer around it. If I got to go smoke outside because there's a kid in the building, I'll do that. But you're not just gonna be like, you got to get out of. I'm not smokeless. This is not Snoop. <laughs> you ain't going to uh, smoke free. I'm going to smoke the marijuana for the rest of my life as long as I can. I had my years where God had me stop, which was when I was incarcerated. You mm. know what I mean? Like, but other than that, I'm good now. I paid my dues, stopped when I was supposed to. Now I'm back and never quitting. This shit's a bitch when you forcefully got to quit. Oh, mm. man. It's one of the worst things. All three of us have been there. Yeah. Yeah. But I went through I, it. I had a long stint of probation and uh, like halfway through it, I, I failed and I had to go sit down and that shit was just like, damn, it was one of the worst things. And then I look back now and I'm like, man, all these fools on probation got their medical card and they can fucking smoke. What? And I'm like, yo, my yeah. life got turned upside down for what? that shit. Like I had two homies come home and be like, yeah, like I could just get this medical card and I could smoke and the PO and I'm like. You're still skeptical. You're like, oh, for real? <laughs> I'm just like, this shit is crazy because like you said, like I was in that era where this is like, that shit wasn't happening. You know what I mean? I was on parole and like, I loved it weed so much that like, I wasn't even thinking about my freedom. I was thinking about just smoking weed. That's a fact. Like, and I was at a point where I was hiding it from everybody close. Brothers, mom and parole officer and like i'm smoking smoking i would smoke on a friday knowing i had to go report to my po wouldn't go and just be waiting and just waiting for them to come get me monday like type shit they would come get me monday 
and then take me, I did like twice, I did a 90 day program. I didn't go back to jail, but twice they sent me to a 90 day program where you was just in there, it's like a rehab where you don't go to jail. It's like the step before jail. You're allowed more things and shit like that. But after that, I just was like, yo, I, I can't live like this no more. But nowadays where you could just come out from jail, get a medical card and be smoking weed, it's like it's almost too comfortable. It's like you nigga think about catching a doing some shit in the streets and be like, I'll be able to smoke weed when I come home. It's just like the way they're setting this shit up is like we think it's good, but this shit can be like bad too as well. You I never thought I mean? of it like that. Damn. That it's like I looked at it like, well, yeah, then people aren't going back for dumb shit. But then I'm like, no, I didn't even think about it like that, where they're like, I can get out and Bro, there's smoke. jails, there's 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 phones in, in the yeah. jails, the TVs are getting better. Everything is like getting more comfortable, I feel like, in jail. I feel like jail is not supposed to be upgraded. It's just stick and be how it always is in that perception. A fucked up place, you don't have much, and you got to make do what you got. If you add these TVs and all that shit like that, motherfuckers going to be out here just be like, shit, I, I ain't have a TV at home in my room. I ain't have this and I got this and this and this. It's just, I don't know. My thoughts on that is they're making jail too comfortable. It's you know a business. I mean? Like, literally. It's a business. That's the part it's where I'm like, okay, they're really running a business. Yeah. And if you go down that, that, that web of, who's really behind it all. I mean, it's all tied to the politicians, all that, all the companies that serve the commissary and all the products and all the contracts they have with all these prisons and jails. It's literally all of them just, it's like a recycling revolving door. Like even the rehab programs you go to that it's state mandated, you start to realize like, oh shit, this is all controlled. And that they, they're going to keep you in that system as long as they can, as much as they can. So for the people that are institutionalized, yeah, they probably live better in jail than they do on the streets. It's just crazy. So it's fucked up. It's crazy, but yeah. every, every number that you have in there, because you're a number, right? You're just, that's just more money coming in. They got to have so many beds filled and that's it. It's well, it's crazy. like you used to tell me you're like probation is the biggest sham ever. Yeah, because mo like to, for you to be like up. two, three years, and you can't have one hiccup. And hiccups are, I mean, that could be anything from even just getting pulled over <gasps> for a traffic stop and it not going the way you think. Yeah, whatever it's, they decide, whatever to, they, they decide. Yeah. To switch yeah. back though, did you know when you guys were? Because anyone who's watched vlogs and YouTube day to day was like the thing. Like I, I mean, I wasn't even into YouTube and I was watching those. Did you know when you guys were recording those that it would become like? damn near the blueprint for like rap vlogs or like a vlog of life i i had no idea but wiz did you know like he was always ahead of like tech and social media like when twitter came out and all these shit new shits came out like from myspace and jumping over to all of these other new shit he was like the first one like twitter always on there and instagram always on there figuring out how to do shit all the apps like he was like ahead of so i feel like he was showing himself a lot. Then he's like, okay, I'm going to start showing everybody that's a part of this shit now. You know what I mean? And I think he just seen it for real, for real. Because wasn't none of us going to go store the Radio Shack to buy a little camera to vlog to be like, let me show the world what we're doing. Even me, I look back now, I started something, but it was, of course, after I seen him do it. It was like, okay, buy a little flip and take this around. But I kind of like stopped doing it. You know what I mean? Like, and he kept going, doing it. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I know my shit wouldn't have been as big as his, but just imagine if I was like vlogging from then you have millions until of subs, now. Bro. For a fact. With my little bit of shit, I would still have some like, people would really know me even more. You know what I mean? Right now, it'd just be like, that's Ludi from Taylor Gang. You know what I mean? Like, don't know don't nobody like really really just know too much about me like it's just like little things that you just may know because of vlogs but i think he was just really the one that really knew where this shit was going and then now you see everybody doing it everything's 10 years later the world is about content and he was doing all of that like back then so it's just like 
I didn't know for sure, but now looking back on it, like he was definitely like on to something like type shit. So I think that's why he's, you know what I mean, able to do what he is now and just don't give a fuck what people say. It's just like people forget the shit that he started. There was no anybody groups naming their shit gang when we did it. The people before it pay homage to. Cool, but that era from him until like now, how many names and people got gang after their shit? There's kids today that tell their mom, can I get that patch in my head? Can I get that blonde patch? Let me get that blonde patch. That shit was done 10, 12 years ago. You know what I mean? That's a fact. So it's just like, there's with that, the fucking content, the way he dressed, definitely was like, you know, he set trends. Like, but he's not a a boastful type of person. He's not gonna be like, I did this, I did this, da 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 da. But twenty twenty four, I'm gonna be the one to tell y'all what my nigga did. It's facts. It's proof. It's out there. Ain't no lie. You can go check it out. You know what I mean? I'm here to. If he ain't gonna speak it. I'm going to speak it, you know what I mean, to what I know, my best knowledge. So, yeah, I, he, he always been to something, been on to, like, something since then, you know what I mean? Damn, bro, you got to dab everywhere we go. It's discreet, it's portable, nobody knows. DrDabber.com, use the code, get your access now. What was it like growing up in, uh, in Pittsburgh? Like, bring it all the way back. All the way back, I mean, at first it was just like, for me, it was uh, more so like sports, girls, like I played baseball, basketball, football, and like my Chevy was always into the same thing, baseball, football, basketball, and I just always used to just watch him, like whatever Chevy wanted to do as a little brother, like anybody with a big brother, you'd be like, I want to do that, you know what I mean? So it was just like, one of those gift and a curse things, you know what I mean? Because I just always look at it as like, if I would have just been like, I want to do this and I'm going to do this and not really watch him all the time. It's like, I probably would have had a different life, but I'm here. So I don't really like deflect on it and be like, uh, I wish I would have boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? But I grew up watching him go to school and like, he he graduated and was selling drugs and in the house playing a game every day. And I'd be waking up in the morning going to school. And I'm like, I couldn't wait to do that. I couldn't wait to just be waking up, go hustle, and be playing a game. Like that was because I seen him do it. He tried college, but it didn't work. He came back home on the streets and it was like that was it. Like, so like I will watch that. 12th grade came and my mom, she was like, I don't give a fuck what you do. You better graduate high school. You go to college, whatever you want to do after that is up to you, but you must graduate high school in this household. I did that. And then I was like doing the same thing Chevy was doing, selling drugs. You know what I mean? Motherfucking playing video games, doing little shit. And um, through that, like, he met Wiz, going through the studio, doing music and shit like that. I was like, for a minute, I was actually like Chevy's hype man. Like any shows he did, like in the Pittsburgh or whatever like that, like I would do. Like we had one where it was like we both had on LeBron James jerseys when he played for Cleveland. And I was just like, yo, I'm about to be Chevy's hype man. This is about to be crazy. This is my brother. Da -da 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 -da. Like this is like, I always watch him and I'm next to him doing what he's doing so it was like a it was a thrill for me you know what I mean but that ended surely he didn't need me he said fuck out of here I wasn't really doing <laughs> nothing so uh I moved on and then I like got in the streets more he met Wiz they linked I met Wiz and then like uh you know we linking up on the studio doing shows inside the states and now I go to jail from 2005 to 2008 and this time, like, Wiz is starting to buzz. It's just like the Say Yeah video is on MTV right now. I'm in my jail cell, my cubicle, let me say. Got MTV on my TV, and the next video, they say, next video is Say Yeah by Wiz Khalifa. 
and I'm like, the video comes on, and I'm seeing all my homies. Damn. Lonnie, Breeze, Chevy, Sledrin, Wiz. He got them all in the video. And I'm looking at this shit like, this shit is about to be something. Like, this nigga's on TV. And I'm not one of those dudes in jail where I'd be like, I know such and such, or I know I'm just in there doing my shit, handle my business, ready to get the fuck up out of there type shit. So I I come home. Wiz got a buzz now, of course. I come home, and uh, I get in trouble, like I was telling y'all earlier a few times. And then 2010, September, I'm off parole. Wiz has, like, his, a tour going, like, I think it's like the third or fourth show and it's in Cleveland. Chevy's not there yet, but he's about to drive up. So I drove with Chevy. Somebody drove us. Go straight on the tour bus. I got a little blunt. I can smoke weed now. Like, so I'm smoking. I got a little blunt. This is before the papers. I got a little blunt like this big. I walk on the bus. Wiz is just like out of nowhere. He's like, bro, like we don't smoke paper. We don't smoke blunts no more. I'm like, huh? What? When? He's like, we don't smoke them no more. This is why. This is why. This is why. Take the little blunt, throw it out the tour bus door, never look back. And to me, it made sense as a smoker. You're tasting all the weed. It's no tobacco. And it's just the highs, more cleaner, it's more healthier, all that stuff like that. And we're saving money now. We're not buying papers no more. Motherfuckers are sending us packs of papers, sending us boxes and shit like that. We ain't even got to buy papers. I'm like, damn, like, motherfucking blunts is like $5 and shit like that. You only get five, and then these papers is 32 and they're only $2. I'm just adding all of this shit in my head, the pros and cons, and I'm like, this shit don't make no sense. Like, this thing about the blunt money, people could have been saving to go towards other shit. You know what I mean? So... Started the tour and then was started doing off by doing the merchandise with Wiz. I was selling merch where this shit was selling like crack in the 80s. Like, I'm telling you, like. <laughs> I cash, was buying it. I cash, still got a bunch of stuff. I mean, cash <laughs> on the man. Like, Dude, the we papers. Didn't, we didn't have no people going to, like the money wasn't going to no account or nothing. It was us. Like, it was hand in hand. Like, the money was on the bus every day. We counted. Boom, boom, boom. His uncle was in charge of it. I was doing the merch for a long time for like maybe like two years. And then I kind of like wanted something more hands on for myself. So he had the meet and greets going already. He already was doing those. But they had somebody from Atlantic, the label that would like come out and that person will have to go get Wiz. Say, hey, how long is this going to be? Da, 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 da. And instead of having that person do it, I was like, yo, Will, why not just shadow this guy one summer? See how just see how the shit if it's really serious and then see if I can handle it. And I shadowed him. Then after that year, I was the meet and greet VIP coordinator. I came up with like a few more ideas as a fan, like as a fan of music and what I would want and what would be exciting. I came up with like the fans coming on stage with Wiz, going to go check out his tour bus, going to go check out his dressing room. And uh, also getting merch, you know what I mean? And signed shit too as well. I came up with like that whole package. Did really well. And I kind of like, I like helping people. So like, that's kind of like my thing. Like meeting people and them coming up to me, telling their stories and, you know what I mean? Thanking me, telling me. Because I feel like most VIP coordinators, they're either like, don't give a fuck. They're just trying to get the job done. So it's not really handled like, taking their time, no patience and shit like that. Like we have a Google phone on a road that the fans call me. They don't have my uh, direct number, but they call me if they have any issues, like finding somewhere to park. And I answer that motherfucker like, yeah, it's me. You got to go here. Da, 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 da. And it takes a lot of patience and shit like that. So once I got into that, like that's kind of like been my role. And then also like, I love music. Um, and shit like that. So the tours been like crazy to me. Like I didn't leave Pittsburgh ever until I was 28 years old until I started getting with him. So it's like, I've been loving it. Cause I did my whole life. I, my half of my life, I ain't really do shit for real. I was in Pittsburgh, didn't travel, stayed in the city. And now I'm like out the countries in these other places. And like, 
just you know what I mean? It's like, like going I, to battle or some shit. Yeah, like in at all. Like so, you know, like being where we come from, it's like everybody doesn't get those opportunities like at all. You know what I mean? Like I was shot in my eye with a BB gun when I was seven years old by my little brother, like one accident. So like I can't see out of this eye. But like as I got older, it got blue and the ladies start loving it. But what gave you what gave me my confidence just to go back is sports. Like this shit happened when I was seven and I started getting into sports maybe like eight, ten years old. And then like I start seeing like I could be better than motherfuckers with two eyes. I start realizing like, damn, like I could do this and I only got this. I was like, oh, it's over. Like, and my confidence was like, you can't even, people used to rip on me, call me one eye Willie and all types of names. I didn't hear every one eye joke you can possibly hear. And I literally would just break down and cry as a kid. Like that shit hurt me. But as I got 11, 12, 14, that shit was like, in one ear and out the other. Like when you get on this basketball court, I'm a two, I'm a I'm a kill you. Like I'm a destroy you. When we on that football field, you ain't even gonna know I got one eye. Like when we on a baseball, you ain't even gonna know this type of shit. So it's just like and also I like I have seizures and shit like that that I end up like getting later happening to me like later on in life when I was like fourteen. But I think when I was seven they didn't want to do the surgery and get the BB out of my head because I was like too young. So it's like technically is still there so that could be like the cause of my seizures as well i just don't know because when you got metal on your shit you can't do cascades you can't do all of that i gotta find somebody now in this area era that fucking you know what i mean does that type of shit but i found out like my seizures come from like me not getting no rest and shit like that like if i go to bed at four i can't get up by seven and try to work and do shit like that i gotta like really lay down if i go to sleep later i just gotta wake up later type shit but you know this this taylor gang thing i feel like this is all like you know blessings on blessings on us on how each individual deals with people and stuff like that because all we want to do is smoke weed and have fun and enjoy ourselves and whoopty whoop like that's really it for real for real so what was ludy's first time smoking weed real weed or fake weed i have a <laughs> I, have, I don't asset. know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because, I'm confused. Let's because, go with the fake weed. Because, <laughs> that. because I had a fucking, I told you, like, I was in love with weed. Like, my mom was smoking it, always would smell it and see it in the ashtray. So, this was, like, before I actually can get my hands on it and be like, okay, we can smoke this. So, like, I had this perception that weed was the fall leaves. That used to be on the ground. Da 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 da. Like, so <laughs> I took a piece of paper out of the house, go up in the woods, grab some leaves. Da 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 so that was like my first like, okay, you need to just find you some real weed that you can smoke. So at the time, my cousin who was like selling drugs, he was selling weed, he was selling Reggie at the time, brown Reggie. I found the stash spot. It was over. Like, so I went in this handful, roll it up, light it. And at that time, you couldn't tell me Reggie wasn't Khalifa Kush. You know what I mean? Like, that shit got me high as fuck. Called all my homies up. Yo, we are fucking getting high before school. You know what I mean? Type shit. Because we would just get high. My mom would leave at 7, 6 a.m. Because she worked at another school. So, she was gone before us. So, I would be able to call the homies, come down, smoke. We smoke in the crib, leave and walk and go to school. But that was, like, my first time, like, smoking weed, like, which was crazy because I really thought weed was the brown leaves that was on the ground. And he started with wake and bakes. That, like, I mean, right in the morning, you jumped right into All, it. Always. I feel like that was, I don't know if it was meant for it to be that timing because my mom was, you know what I mean? Any other timing during the day, I got to, like, hide it from her. I got to, like, come in the house later, spray myself, wait till my high go down. 
from school in the morning, I could be high as fuck, go to school. They could smell it all they want to, but it's just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like back then it wasn't, we wasn't even really thinking about getting in trouble about smelling like it. As long as we didn't get caught doing it, that was like a thing. You know what I mean? So Yeah, if you didn't have it on you. I was kind of like the weed man for our, for my f- close friends. Like, literally, I always had it somehow, some way. I'm going to have some weed for sure. Man, I'm sick of spending so much time going to the store, having to make all these runs and load all this shit up. Yo, what are you doing here? It's hash making day. I'm always at Grow Generation. If you don't want to have to always go into the store, it's super easy. They deliver 60 plus stores nationwide, delivery right to your doorstep and discreet. GrowGeneration.com. Use the code, tell them the family sent you, and get hooked up. Being the Wii Man used to be so significant. <sighs> oh. That shit's just gone. The plug. Yeah, because I hear my little brother, he be like, I'll never buy for fucking weed, man, again. Like, I don't need no street weed. All I need is this shit out the dispensaries and shit like that. Street weed. And I'm like, man, like, times is really, really flipped because motherfuckers ain't got time to be waiting on you to be like 20 minutes and it's 40 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like well, a lot of people are out of business right now. It's like, dude, like don't even only, answer the phone and shit, bro. There's like a handful of people that are still able to do that type shit, like, and they they're lasting because they give you real time. Yo, I'll be there by this time. Okay, cool, boom. But when you keep saying twenty minutes, thirty minutes, my fuckers is gonna be like, dude, I'm going down the street. I'm gonna just go down the street to the dispensary. I was just not trying to leave the house for the moment. You know what I mean? So you lose people when you be ignorant to that shit, especially these days. Motherfucker, you competing with dispensaries now. You're not competing with just the next street guy. Fucking delivery services. You know what I mean? Shit. Delivery yeah. services. 70 like different crazy. kinds of weed on the shelf. And all that shit. It's just like a lot, dude. Like, so what the fuck? I would like to go back, though, when you're in jail and you see your brother on the music video. Is the first thing you do is a phone call and you're like, yo, bro, what? Like, are we on or like what? I think I maybe call maybe like a few days later just to kind of like talk about the video. I don't remember if I said like we on or anything like that. I just remember just being like, damn, like I seen a video like, yo, that shit was crazy. Like, what the fuck is going on type shit? And it was just like normal, just conversations like he's doing his thing. He's buzzing. Da, 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 da. This is looking at him. This label looking at him. This is happening. This is happening. I'm like, shit, like. This shit can be like a thing, and then I should end up being like a fucking thing. And then when you got out, it felt real. Yeah, like, like you man, link up with. When I got on a bus, okay, the bus leaving Cleveland or wherever we was at the Ohio show, and just going to the next one, I'm like, yo, this shit is real. Like, okay, we on tour. This is some shit I seen on a documentary before. Like niggas on the road on a bus. 12 of us all on one bus, you know what I mean? And just doing shows, knocking them out, getting right back on the bus and going to the next joint. Like, talk, talk about those early days when, like, right when you're getting on that and that first tour, what were some of the crazy things you were learning or seeing and, like, what spots were you guys finding the best weed and were you were you bringing your own shit or what? how were you guys maneuvering Man, and, like, bro, making shit work? That shit in the beginning was all internet. Right. All internet. We get to a city. Everybody like Facebook had, at this time or what? It was it was MySpace. Twitter. It was a little bit of Twitter. Of course, I was on MySpace, but I didn't do too much like with him when that when MySpace was cracking. I feel like once I was with them, it was like more so it was more so like the beginning of like Instagram and Twitter. You know what I mean? So we would be on Twitter, motherfucker, everybody. As soon as we get in a new city, who got the best we who got the best tweeting out, come bring us da 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 da. And we went at least three to five years of just like meeting people, run through bullshit, run through good shit, bad shit. Oh, this is the person we need to call every time we come here. You know what I mean? The Chicago's, the Atlanta's, you know what I mean? Like the Houston's and shit like that. Sometimes you run into some bullshit, you know what I mean? But you're on a road. So it's just like you can't really be like traveling. It's not really like a thing or cool or good to be bringing 
okay, we're going to take this. Let's buy this before we go on the road. We're going to buy a whole pound or we're going to buy a whole two pounds before we go on the road because we need it. No, that's not what you want. You know what I mean? So it was definitely just us, I feel like, being engaged like with people and just reaching out. Hey, who got this? Who got that? Like type shit, pull up, we get you in the show type shit. In the beginning, it was really just crazy for me to see like the fans how crazy they would be going over this motherfucker. Like, that was, like, crazy to see firsthand. You know what I mean? Instead of just, like, on a documentary or a video or somebody telling you a story. It's just, like, he had a fucking cult and still does. But, like, the beginning, it was, like, like, after the shows, fans out there lined up by the tour bus. You know what I mean? Like, I seen a dude fucking... Let his girl go on a tour bus and wait outside. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, yo, this shit is like insane. It's another world. You know what I mean? Like another shit when you tour and seeing people like buy tickets and then to be able to do it for as long as he's been doing it. Still doing it. There's pop- popping artists these days that can't tour like that. Only thing that stopped us from touring was the pandemic. We was touring since I told you I got on that bus, which was like- What year was that? 2010. Fucking 14 years later. And only thing that stopped it was the pandemic. So when somebody tries to be like, Wiz ain't doing this, he ain't put out a song, he ain't da 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 you better check this track record. Like, look at them tours and look at your favorite artists and how often they tour. Like, yeah, he he, he's in like like superstardom. uh, What? Like everybody knows who Wiz Khalifa is, bro. Like from your your grandma to a a a child, bro. It's it's that doesn't really happen with a ton of artists. Mm. Very few select. Especially a weed artist. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's one thing to be claiming a singer. Or claiming to be yeah. a stoner. And that's that, a whole and other that thing. part of it, like, I watched him really knock down doors with this weed shit. Like, we would go hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel and get kicked out, smoking fees, where it would be like, to the point it would be like, like, I would want to smoke in my room, but I would be like, nah, I'm not going to do that to the company, to Will and them Taylor Gang. Shout out to Will. Um, but I won't want to, you know what I mean? That bill's going to come to them. So I would just like go to his room and smoke, you know what I mean? And smoke his room out, you know what I mean? Like there was a hotel in Pittsburgh. They don't even allow him to, like they banned him for a long time for smoking it out, like literally. Like, so like him pressing that and then finding hotels that be like, fuck it, we want the money. He ain't hurting nobody. It's just weed. We can put this here, the air thing to kind of make it a little better. And we'll let them stay here. And we just went with those hotels, you know what I mean? And just him smoking weed and then like to see it now, it's like my fucking NBA players ain't getting tested. NFL players ain't getting tested for this shit. It's like it's about to be not really a crime. Da, 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 jobs is about to start testing, you know what I mean? All the way, you know what I mean? It's just like that part of knocking down doors. Like he, to me, to my eyes, you can't tell me he's like not the new Snoop. Like this is what Snoop did. You know what I mean? It's just like, and Snoop look at him as that. He feeds off of his energy because they're fighting for the same thing. Like, flood the internet with marijuana. Fuck it. Even if Instagram take it down, flood it. Show that shit. Because one day, Instagram's going to be like, you know what? We need to just cut this weed shit with people on Instagram. We need to just, it's legal. It's like, da, 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 da. As long as nobody's posting them doing some crazy shit with it, like it's like a, a money weed exchange, like you're showing you're doing some shit. It's just like y'all shouldn't be taking shit down. Like, you know what I mean? Like where it is now, it's like there's no way. I feel like Instagram's still living like it's two, like it's five years ago when it comes to weed. We talk about this. It, it kills me, man. Like don't show, but you'll let this girl show her titties and ass and you won't take that down. And you won't flag her. You won't say nothing. It's it's like, you know what I mean? So, he am knocking down doors for this weed shit. Like, I watched it, like, firsthand. You know what I mean? Like, people be saying they smoke. Like, 
rappers. We talked about rapper weed, you know what I mean, type shit. It's like, they don't be smoking like that. Like, everybody do not smoke like that. They do these brand deals. It's all about money. It ain't because you love weed. You know what I mean? It's just like, you got one or two backwoods in a club. That's it. Like, you in there for two hours. Like, you love weed. It's like, sometimes you hit it, you don't even inhale it. It's like, dude, there's a lot of shit that just gets swept under the rug. And as a stoner, I'd be watching. You know what I mean? I'd be like, this motherfucker don't smoke weed for real, like type shit. So he's one of the ones when it comes to this weed shit, for sure. That's why people embrace you guys as Taylor Gang, because they really know you guys are about authentic. this. Yeah, it's authentically you guys. It's not It's not like, hey, they're putting their name on it and they're just trying to sell some product. Like Even from the beginning, I remember your merch booth, you had your custom papers. Everyone was like, got to get a pack of those. Like nobody was on that yet where you were like, I love this. We're putting papers out, the merch, the clothing, like the whole thing was like, if you're living this life, yeah, we're with you, man. Like every grower I knew in like 2009, 10, that's all they were banging. That's a- every single car I would get in SUV truck. It was, it was Wiz, Taylor gang, Chevy. It was just nonstop. No, that shit was a, a moment. Like very cool. That shit was a moment, man. Talk about, because I feel like a lot of this is, uh, you know, in the States. Talk about when you guys first started touring out of the country. What was that like? Crazy. Like, I had to really, really adapt to out the country, never been. I don't really know if, I don't really think he'd been at this point. I think we all was like for the first time. So it was like the food, you know what I mean? It's like no really seasoning on the food over there. It's a little different from what I'm used to over being in the States for 20 something years. And I'm just going like, so like the food one, like the first couple of days was like fucking me up. Like I was like, well, like I can't eat this shit. Like I need to find something that's like I seen before that I'm used to. You know what I mean? So when I go over there, it's just like their cold cuts is like the best thing they make over there. Little cold cut sandwich. You know what I mean? Where, where are we talking? Like Europe? Yeah, Europe. This was like we had yeah. a Europe tour. We was all was, on, so that was where you guys went first. First, out yeah. the country, like on a bus flight. We all on a flight, land, get on a bus. Got a tour bus over there. And tour buses over there are different. They're like double decker. It's like upstairs, downstairs. But the this is like it's the downstairs is the driver, but upstairs somehow it's like the back of the bus, like the lounge area. It's like hella weird, but you can see the front. Oh, it's like shit. you're on yeah. top of the driver. It's really weird, but it's super, super, super dope. The fans over there, even more crazier. Super excited. Like over there in London was like, like a wild, wild, wild time. Like they go cr- went crazy over Wiz over there. Like I remember we was like leaving a show and we was in a sprinter and like, you know, there's just kids outside and we pull off and like we get to a light and we see this kid running down the side of the van. We're all looking at him. And you know, normally we're expecting him to be like, Wiz, I love you. Get you. Do, do, do. We get to the light. This motherfucker says, Ludi, I love you. And we all started dying in the van because it was just like unexpected. Like he literally ran. And then once he got next to the van, like said this shit. And it's like, to this day, it just makes me like smile and be like, damn, like this motherfucker is like, not only are they watching him, they're like watching and catching on and seeing what, who they can relate to out of the group. You know what I mean? That they like type shit. Cause personality and just doing shit that's not like scripted and you da, 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 da. I think that's what people like tag on to it's just like it may be that I got a fucked up by and my confidence is like still like don't give a fuck type shit that people be like I fuck with that motherfucker like he's a pothead like he don't give a fuck about his flaws he just be like you know what I mean he takes it what it is type shit so that part of it, like over there, it just was like, you know, seeing that world and how they live and what they do, what they eat. And, you know, the weed shit ain't big over there either. So it was like that part over there was like stressful. Right. Like stressful. Paranoid. Finding weed over in London was 
one of the worst things we had to do over there. You know what I mean? It was just like, who the fuck are we going to start off to get to find us like some actual good weed? So we went through the bullshit, the bullshit, the bullshit, the bullshit. Then, you know, we finally find somebody and we we good every time we go over there now. So it's just like, you know. This came a long way. Yeah, very, very, very long. And I don't think really nobody like from our group besides like the shit whiz dude really sits down and like breaks down the shit that we did and been through. Like you can't find these two. You can't, you're not going to find an interview that goes in detail like this. Nowhere that anybody does on Taylor Gang, I guarantee you. Like this is going to be the one where you had any questions or y'all had any questions, ask that people were going to be like, yo, I never knew that. Oh, wow. This is why such and such and this, 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 it makes, you know what I mean? Like that's what I want to do. That's my like tunnel vision for 2024 is to get people to not be like, Oh, that's just Ludi from Taylor Gang. Like, no, this nigga, this, you don't know. You don't even know he did this. He didn't came from this. He didn't been this, boo, boo, boo. Like the whole thing, not just that one piece. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. If you're not happy with your current nutrient company or you're not happy with how your products or flour is coming out, try Drip Hydro. All you got to do is go to FSOTD.com, get the discount code and DripHydro.com or grow generation stores nationwide, online or in store, we get you hooked up. You got to try Drip Hydro. Everybody's switching to Drip and whether you want to come in store or you need to drop straight to your facility, Grow Generation can help you out there. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you and get on Drip Hydro now so when you're when you guys are overseas and you're touring you you playing your role how was it was it different or like you know what you guys kind of have to adapt to uh, beyond the food and you know finding the good weed and shit like just i i just feel like their lifestyle you know what i mean like us being over there dealing with their money you know what i mean like they're coming to buy merch you know what i mean like dealing with the venue people like, yeah, figure a lot of new shit out. All of that shit is new to everybody. So it's like, it's everything that we had to adapt to. You know what I mean? Like literally everything for the first time. Going to these venues, meeting these people, seeing who's going to come out for us. You know what I mean? Like all of that shit is like new. Like especially, you could imagine like how it is for the artists. Like, is people really going to come out for me over here? Like, what is my audience over here? Like, leap of faith. Do I have one? You know what I mean? But with the internet at that time, it's just like Will knew that he had followers and had something over there. We already had did a tour in the States. So it was just being like, they wanted it over there. You know what I mean? So when you do that in the States, that's how those Europe tours happen. It's like, they see it and see it and see it and jealous and telling and be like, we need it over here. And you get so many people when you get the right person, call your phone and be like, I want to make this happen, blah, blah, blah. Then you're in Europe doing the same shit, like pulling up to these venues. We did cold. We didn't did warm. Like we didn't did every type of weather over there. Like, you know what I mean? It's always gloomy over there, but. What's the, what's the craziest vibes. place you guys went to out there it's this far? Uh, um. I'm gonna just say, hands down for me is 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 Am is Amsterdam. I mean, that's got to be a place that embraced you. Yeah, be, to me, that was like the the place me and Will just was like dying to be like, yo, when we get here, we are waking up at eight a.m. <laughs> Soon as the coffee shop open, we are out of our fucking rooms. And going to this shit, like, we didn't hit the bulldog. We didn't, I didn't got film. Like, I documented when me and Will was, like, going to that shit. Like, it's a moment. I had a little uh, shit I was doing. It's called Light in Europe. But, like, we go to the uh, bulldog, go to the coffee shop, smoke. You know what I mean? It was just like, yo, we're really somewhere where you can fucking smoke and eat and chill and vibe. And it's just way over here in Amsterdam. You know what I mean? So... For the first time, that was like, that was like crazy good to me. You know what I mean? Like type shit. We didn't really run into like no, you know what I mean? Like no wild, crazy shit. Of course, we have fun girls. 
shit like that, but it wasn't like no really crazy moments. And like just seeing the uh, Red Light District for the first time in person was was you're pretty like, interesting. Because like, you heard about it for years. Yeah, and then you see it and you're see like, oh, whoa. And I'm like walking down this shit. So boom, we I'm walking down and looking, looking, looking. I'm like, okay, boom, this is how this shit work. Okay, boom. I see one. All right, I'm going over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going over there. Like you window up. shopping, huh? Literally window <laughs> shopping because I'm like, I have to experience this in life just so I can say I did it. Like, I think the second time we went back there, we went took our cameraman, one of our guys had never been to London, never been to Amsterdam. And he's like looking around at all the girls and he's like, he just can't believe like what he, it took him about an hour. Like he was shopping for food to yeah. actually pick one of the girls. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is taking you so long to pick somebody? Like they're not bad. There's probably a few real bad ones, but it's like, they're good looking if they're in a the glass. You know what I mean? If they're in the window looking at you waving, it's like they're they're okay. Like fucking. He's pick. getting specific. Yeah, he's he like, wants he's looking for a wife. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Like, he's treating it like that. He's treating it like maybe I might be interested in her after yeah, this shit. Yeah, like, yeah. dude, don't do that, You're like, bro. She ain't gonna be in Just shit. Look at the bro. face. If you think she's cute, <laughs> go in there and do the shit and get the fuck out of there. It's like, and then you can experience it. But they that, trip about cameras down there. Yes, like, they don't. For real. You, you better. They, they hate that. Yeah, shit. you better not do too much or just try to do a real low key because that shit is like I mean, it I gets feel like, sketchy you'll start having like random people on the street kind of following you and, yeah, and, like, and, they and, in on and you shit? would like, be a dummy to be over there on their field on their rules pull your phone out and then like you don't know what like you just said people may follow you like, cause I feel like that's just a business that's oh, like disrespectful you think they ain't, you think they ain't already think about Okay, maybe we need to have some random people just on the streets just seeing if, making sure nobody's taking pictures too. You know what I mean? Like, that's just that deep over there. You know what yeah, I mean? Like They control get, that They'll that go that far. You know what I mean? So, those shits, just being over there, it was like fun. Um, that's dope though. Will Will's like a a, a passionate uh, aficionado cannabis too. Oh, man. You guys he, like- he, Will, listen, man. Will is crazy. Like, me and his... Like shit really bonded between, like I told y'all, me being a weed man, him being Wiz's manager. He's not always around, always around, but like he used to call me and be like, yo, I need an ounce, I need a half. Da -da 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 -da. He would come drive down his little piece of shit car. Da -da -da. We <laughs> you had to do him like that. <laughs> we would smoke because he says it every time. Yeah. This is how we tell the story. Yeah. Like yeah. he has some bullshit ass <laughs> car. Like, <laughs> He would come down in the hood. What was it? What was it? I forget. It was Pontiac like Pontiac or a Buick or something. It was shit? like one of those Buicks. I think it was blue. Like it was. I think it was a Buick though, or or one of those like little Chevrolets. Some shit. It was. It was like a real like grandma, granddad type of car. Mm -hmm. and he would drive down from school or where he lived and come get weed. He would go back up to school, do his little thing. Yo, I need more type shit. And me and him kind of got close off of that. And then now like. When I joined the team and started like working and shit like that was like, okay, we already knew each other. Boom. Da, 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 da. That's like one of my, you know, everybody has that white best friend. Like he's, he's mine. He's mine. <laughs> he's yeah. mine. Like he's literally mine. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's like my brother. Like he's one of the reasons why I'm here. Of course, Chevy, Wiz, you know what I mean? Type shit. So I always, you know what I mean? Got the include them you know what i mean in my story like those, them is my homies but that's a funny like backstory on how like will loves weed low-key but the thing is he's so busy that he doesn't really get to smoke he it can't a be lot. hanging out just bullshit he, he doesn't really like you know what i mean like he'll call me and be like dude i just need to smoke and i'll be like come on let's go like when we when he used to be on the road with us you know what i mean like he's working all fucking day while everybody else is either chilling or doing their job, but he's the one that's, you know what I mean? He ain't got sit, time to sit down. Everybody's and roll. asking him what to you do. You know what I mean? Like, and he don't really like to get too high during the day. You know what I mean? Cause he, he got, got a lot of yeah. shit to do. 
So he'll end of the day, he'll be like, I'm trying to get fucking high. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't smoked all day and he's like, I'm trying to get high. And I'm like, okay, dude, like, let's go high. It's either late at night with him or like super duper early in the morning, like type shit. Like we'll go eat breakfast, smoke, then he'll go do what he got to do type shit. But I mean, with these tours, these are massive tours. And then you got other guys. Who's handling, you handled the merch and stuff. Who's handling the women? I'm pretty much doing, I'm one of them guys that's doing that too. Because when I had weed, the first guy I would hit off is the merch dude. To be like, yo, can you hook hook up the people? Like that was the the easy get to where I could, I could lace you up with some weed or be like, yo, I got some fire. Like, And the thing is with the merch, the way we had it set up is like we was always like either in front of the door the main entrance of these venues with our table. So it's like any ladies, anything that walked in there that we wanted or seen, we would be like, okay, yeah. And then like, there's three of us at the merch booth. So sometimes like I would leave, go up on stage, take a look in the crowd, see see what's out there type shit, go back to the merch booth. You know what I mean? And then for the end of the show, you know, everybody got to leave back out. And that's when we used to get like the flood, like people on their faces. Let me buy this before I leave. Because when they first get there, they want to get to their seat. Some people will stop there at their merch booth, but most people want to get straight to their damn seat. You know what I mean? At the end, they'll buy shit before they leave because they don't want to leave without buying shit. But I normally was like the, I'm the guy for that, for the women. I'm, I must say there's another few of us, but from number one, of course, like Wiz and Chevy can't, they don't go out in the crowd and be like, what's out there? You know what I mean? Yeah, Back yeah. then, you know what I mean? Hell like no. they looking at me, Ludi, what's out there? <laughs> yeah. How's it looking? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, there's a few out there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I always was a ladies man before this. So this I, shit. I was going to say, man, I can see that. Why this shit added that? something like, <laughs> yeah, you were like, what? Oh, I got a now. purpose. Like, I got, like, a reason to be out here talking to y'all. Like, y'all got, there's something that y'all want to do, and I can bring y'all to that. So, it was just like, I was in the middle of it. So, it was just like, I took advantage of being in the middle of that. Like, being the one, yo, y'all girls, y'all too, y'all ain't with nobody after the show. Here's my number. Come on, come on back type shit. Like, you know what I mean? Of course, check the IDs, all that shit like that. And that's another thing, too, is... He's like, man, I wouldn't even get we, paid for all that extra shit. We, <laughs> we was big on, like, that type of shit. Like, IDs, check IDs. We ain't playing no games. We ain't even trying to be going down that road. We ain't seen it. We know how it goes. No, you can't do that. Like, And we was learning this tour shit on the fly, but we knew the the real basic shit you had to do when motherfuckers, when you got somebody like Wiz, you know what I mean? Like type shit in the beginning, like we wouldn't let girls have their damn phones in the shit. Like we taking phones, they got to go here. Y'all ain't taking no pictures. We'll do we'll, all that shit like that. You know what I mean? And IDs of course, but in the beginning, it was just like, I was, I'm, I'm the guy for that. Like until this day, you know what Cause I mean? Cause think about it. When you, when Wiz was blowing up and when you guys were hitting these tours, that's kind of when cell phones with cameras started to pop off. That's exactly the same well, time. social media. really. Yeah. And now tie in my space evolving into Facebook and all the other stuff. I mean, you guys are on the rise, literally riding this way to right when the that happened. All that shit. So yeah, now they got bags where everyone zips stuff up in and no signals, but yeah, that's, that's wild. It was, it was, Definitely a time was had, bro. There's, yeah. there's, there's so many stories. Like, you can't even remember all the shit, huh? Like, is it kind of I mean? a blur? I remember the, the shit I need to remember, like, that I know really happened, that I know I was there for. You know what I mean? Somebody, one of the homies might be able to say something, and I'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the shit I know about, like, just the people we've met, the places we've been, the shit we did, the weed thing is just like, this shit is like, can go on forever. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I could have, I could talk and tell y'all stories for three hours. Like, and y'all would just be asking me questions off of the stories. You know what I mean? Like, it's, this it's shit, interesting. I mean, it's, you got a group of friends from a town that are still together to this day. Everything came together organically. It's pretty much the American dream, you know, in, in a nutshell of like, it's kind of like, 
like the movie the sandlot or some shit you know or, or anything that was like shown to us as kids right is that like damn look at how all this came together and it's still together to this day like we're not sitting here talking about the past all it's still happening like it, like you guys just got off tour another summer tour yes. J- you know what i mean with and, and, and snoop they'll, and there'll be yeah. another one this year and it's just it's ongoing it's it's the wave hasn't even fully formed yet and it's nowhere near crashing so it's it's impressive it's it's amazing like five six of us including myself are all childhood friends like childhood like up the street down the street same street blah 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 so it's just like i think that's got a major reason. that part that's, of that it plays like a major we role in still together. everything like even all the way to like sledgering like with the beats like sledgering was like on to something like even doing the beats a long fucking time ago like he lived down the street like i used to call sledgering and be like yo let me get that hoodie like a bar of clothes like we're like that like lonnie didn't smoke weed at one point and he's he's Lonnie is with uh security he didn't smoke weed at one point you could I couldn't smoke weed in Lonnie's car you know what Lonnie is now he's one of my best smokers friends uh smokers to smoke with like literally you know what I mean like it's it's that like Breeze his other security lived up the street from me went to school with me Breeze was so scary back in the motherfucking day like nobody would even bother him or like you would say what's up, but it was like hard. Did you, you was like on the fence of like, do I want to be his friend? I don't know if he's even friendly. You know what I mean? But inside, he's a good dude. You know what I mean? Like that's, we always knew of each other. You know what I mean? Then Wiz coming in the picture and Will, them is like the only two that got added to everybody else that was already like this. You know what I mean? And Chevy, once him and Wiz clicked, Chevy brought him to Hazelwood, which was our neighborhood where we're all from in Pittsburgh. And the whole neighborhood just adopted Wiz. So it was like he was doing music. He was we we he was fucking with us. And like when he would go out or want to go out, we went with him. And you know what I mean? And motherfuckers was not fucking with him or bothering him or giving him any other problems because it's like in the other city, when you come up as an artist, it's like, if you're by yourself, my motherfuckers is going to start trying to test you, bully you, da 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 There was like one point that wasn't letting Wiz in the club in Pittsburgh because he wasn't old enough. But he was like the hottest rapper in the city. You know what I mean? But if you got fucking Breeze and Lonnie and a few Hazelwood people behind you, somebody's going to make something shake and he's going to get in the club. You know what I mean? And like, him being him moving around with Breeze and Lonnie and everybody else is like they really, really took his safety seriously and important. You know what I mean? Like, and now they're here today, they're still around. You ain't never heard nothing like really happening to Wiz safety wise. That's a fact. You know what I mean? And that's because of who the fuck he has around him. You know what I mean? Like they be they're a hood niggas, but they're very, very intelligent. You know what I mean? Like, they know what the fuck they're doing. They ain't like, you know what I mean? They don't sleep on their job type shit. Like, they're always aware type shit. So, who's the favorite person you've been on tour with? Of all the tours you guys have been on, there's been tons of them. Who's the favorite person you guys been on tour with that you're like, man, this is, this was a blast with this person? Snoop. <laughs> yeah, huh? Snoop is my it's a ultimate. Dog. Like, that that whole scenario and just meeting him and just like sitting near him, watching him tell with like, you need to be rolling joints like this if you're going to be smoking them. He rolling fat ass joints and we just rolling like regular shit. Like he like, if you're going to be smoking this nephew, you need to be smoking them like this. He rolling up these joints, big as fuck, fat as hell every time. And that's what Wiz smokes right now. Fat ass joints every time. You know what I mean? But uh, that's Snoop, gotta be wild. Snoop yeah. is like yeah. my ultimate because just seeing him it's from like, like everybody's favorite on TV, uncle. you know what I mean? To being like seeing him on tour. What, G thing? You know what I mean? Like then going on another tour with him. And then like me personally, like I have my own separate relationship with him. Like, I can text him something and he'll reply. It might be two days later. 
But it's Snoop Dogg, motherfucker. I'm happy to get a reply. Like, I text him something in December. It was my nephew's birthday, like, the day before. And it, my nephew just, like, had surgery on his knee playing football. And Snoop deals with football and kids and stuff like that. So I know he feels he will understand what I'm saying. So I hit him. I was like, yo, you make a little video, you know what I mean, to my nephew, shout him out just to kind of, like, you know what I mean, motivate him and get him in good spirits. Bro, he texted me back in like 20 minutes with a video. Nephew, this is da 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 ba 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 da da And I'm like, yo, this nigga is different. You know what I mean? Like, I be on the video game with him every day. Like, at least once a day, he's on the game. Like, game. Madden, poker. You know what I mean? Like, poker's kind of like the downtime when, you know what I mean, he's over Madden, chill, poker, you know what I mean, type shit. So, it's. He don't, he don't like Call of Duty at all. He might play basketball here and there, but he loves Madden because Madden fucks with him. The game actually fucks with him. Like He plays Ultimate Teams, which is this game mode in there where like you can get any old school, new school players that come out. They sell the players. You know, he he's him, so they just give him players. Like They give Snoop player. Like, nigga, here, here you go. And he got two players on offense and defense named Snoop Dogg. They're already... <laughs> <laughs> they're already a 99. Like, they're a 99 from the time the game comes out. Now, mind you, when the game comes out, everybody's only like an 85 rating. He has dudes. So he's dudes. smoking people. <laughs> smoking people. Like, and he loves it. Like, and he deserves, you know what I mean? Like, that treatment. Like, he's done enough. He plays the game. He's not like just an artist that's just like, Yo, do this and don't be playing the game. Like he plays that shit a lot. Like and really be passionate about the fucking game. Do you give your name out so people can link up and play against you or no? He don't really. He's more so like on the friend side, like homies. Like he has a long ass friend list. You know what I mean? So if you on that friend list and you play Madden, like and you're on your game, you're liable to see an invite come across your screen from him. Like just wanting to play. Like what about you? Like, I do, I, I call out, like, fans and shit like that. If I catch somebody, like, talking shit, want to post mm -hmm. I make or something, like, what's your shit? Load up. Like, come on in here. Like, I just got into, like, the Twitch shit, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, Chevy got me a little camera, so I just, like, kind of just hooked it up just to have something. Because I always just Twitch, but I don't never have a camera. And I feel like with me, the person I am, people love to just see me more than just here. You know what I mean? So... Camera thing been working. I've been on Twitch. Y'all can follow me on Twitch too, Ludi T G O D. You know what I mean? Catch a vibe. I'll be dropping content on there. All that type of shit. Yeah. What are the flavors you got out? Oh man, we got this shit right here. Abu Hashish be having some shit on here. This is I don't even know how to pronounce these shits. This is called Zori. Zori is that how you pronounce it? Zori. Okay. And I saw you pull out a hash hole. Oh yeah. I'm is about, that what? Yeah, this is this is uh Fidel has Fidel, a collab Fidel and Abu Hashish did hash holes. They have some of the best hash holes that I've smoked. Yeah. Cause I've smoked a lot of these in the past before they're even before we even got to this point, and like it never burns right when you do wax and weed. I'm like, yeah. this shit is not gonna work. You used to be like called a worm. Yes. Yes. So. And that shit never was, it never was how it is now. I so mean, it twacks when we used to roll it on the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, that shit never works out nah, either. It all bro, trips I got on the ground. Might as well picture. smoke the top of it. I got an old ass picture with me and Wiz holding two fat ass joints with the worms, the brown wax, the worms around them. We was like, we always was like in competition of like, once I got the hold of rolling, like, it was like, competition like it started like okay nigga you roll one nigga be like look at this shit you know what i mean like look at this like look at this like and i'll he's the only one that i'll say rolls better than me but i think i roll the best joints in the world this is actually the Wiz khalifa Dr. I seen that. Collab. yeah yeah. i was watching the clip y'all had the box right here yeah for a bunch of them yeah yeah we we support you, man. We nah, we've been loving it, that, man. bro. We, I appreciate like, it. We had to be the underground stoners, and we and we felt comfortable coming out when you guys were out there. I mean, first time yeah, I ever lit up in some concert halls. halls. Yeah, you know? pioneers for the new school. You know, obviously Snoop and Cypress Hill, and you know the originals came out and really 
knock down the door initially, but there was a time period where it was like, you know, for kids or younger people, it still was, the door was still up. You know what I'm saying? And, sure. and, and you guys came and normalized the shit out of it. Um, that whole era just, it's, it's for our age, I mean, that's never going to be forgot. And, and it's going to continue to go, like you said, until the end of time or, you know, our time because, uh, bro, it's a movement and it's a, it's a time period in life that's just raw energy, kids having fun, you know, all together with, like you said, all you guys, I, I, I kind of knew in my mind, like, yo, they might, they all come from the same place. Like yes. they already all knew each other. They've been on this journey the whole way through and you're still on it. I think that's one of the most special things about it is that. And yeah, you've never heard no drama. You've never heard no you, bullshit. You're not. I don't. I don't know how you've been. Able, you guys have been able to manage to keep it so damn cool the whole time. <sighs> like it's it's pretty impressive. You don't really see that. Like a lot, especially with a lot of big artists that blow up. And like Wiz really blew up. And the next thing I want to talk about is uh, when the Black and Yellow song came out and the whole Super Bowl thing came to fruition. I mean, the way that aligned was just crazy like that really i think took it to the next level if i'm not mistaken where people were like oh who whiskey and that that's when like my parents knew about it like at that point everybody knew about it you know and it was like yeah i've been telling you guys about this guy and his music and then now they see him you know for the super bowl and all that shit and that song it was like it still is the theme still yeah. to this day oh, you go to Pittsburgh. i mean come on you go to a Steelers game if uh, they're not playing that what are you doing that thing, that whole like the black and yellow shit, like Wiz would drive around the city in that car. Literally, he was so happy to get that motherfucker. Like, I feel like he's the like the reason why in Pittsburgh people are doing that shit now. Like, people in Pittsburgh, we we do shit late, but when we like something, we're gonna it's gonna be a thing there too. So like now they be doing the shit where they're doing donuts and shit like out of spy cars, little racing and showing off their shits and. It's all about those Hellcats and all that shit out there in Pittsburgh too. Um, but we were we eating we was out eating at the uh Eaton Park, a little restaurant, it's like after our that we go to after the club. And he's like, Yeah, uh tomorrow I'm shooting a black and yellow video down pull up down the playground. I'm like, Okay, cool. Normally that's the protocol for just a regular video. You know what I mean? Like he didn't give me no details. He just was like, pull up down the playground, I'm shooting a video. We get down there and it's this huge production. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I didn't know this, but Atlantic paid for the video, which he was about to sign to and about to get with. You know what I mean? Pay for the video. So they had all this big production shit people running around doing shit and we're like yo like i'm like yo this is fucking crazy bro like i thought this was about to be a little like running gun video like we about to shoot a big ass uh legendary moment in our neighborhood had all the kids out everybody on the playground and we shot and it was just like it was just like I couldn't believe it at the time, like, but we just took it as like a, you know, we're doing a regular video, but this was the video that was going to be shown on fucking every platform, you know what I mean, back then. So that shit was like another moment where I was just was like, okay, we really, we in the big leagues, like we ain't shooting no more, just running gun videos, I guess. It's, now it's going to be production treatments and you learn about all that shit like that that goes on behind the closed doors which is like you know when you when i seen that shit i just was like wow this shit's crazy like and then the song blew up and then like when i knew black and yellow was like different or this song was like we had something was like other cities were singing this shit so for you to sing another city's anthem you looked past all of that and just focused on the artists and the music, basically. And that means like millions of people did that. This shit be playing in other cities and they go crazy. And I'm like, this shit, it's almost like a trolling type song. Like, 
black and yellow, black and yellow, but I'm in Detroit, black and yellow, black and yellow, but I'm in Atlanta, black and yellow, black and yellow, but I'm in Los Angeles. This is just like people looked past that shit, you know what I mean? And it was like, that's when I was like, yo, this shit is huge. You know what I mean? We're about to be everywhere. He about to be doing this. He about to be doing this. He about to be doing that. Blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, you know, it was the start of, you know what I mean, a legendary thing. And I mean, what are the odds, though, that then the Steelers go to the Super Bowl and fucking everything plays out how it does? Like that, to me, that's just like perfect, a perfect harmony of all things coming together. You timing, know. timing, timing. Yeah. Yeah. God looking out. Timing. It's crazy. Yeah. Because if somebody was to make a black and yellow now, I don't know when the fuck the Steelers would be going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's what I mean? Though. Like the way we're playing is just like, or the way we've been playing is just like, the timing of that was just like God, like everything, like black and yellow. And to see people scream that, the history behind our fans and how Pittsburgh Steelers, like fans travel to other cities and shit like that is just like, his song is aligned with that type shit. You know what I mean? Like how big it is type thing. So how's your mom feel about this? She's seen you and Chevy success and then just the rise over the years and now decades. How's she feel about that? Or your dad? He's my biggest fan. Yeah. You know, my dad was in my life, but like my mom was really it for me. You know what I mean? She raised all three of us plus my little cousin. Like, but she's like, you know, my biggest, you know what I mean? Like she texts me, I love that. Like, you're so funny. Like, she's like, she's, I'm her, but I'm a male. Like, she loves to prank her friends. She loves to do little silly shit to me. You know what I mean? Like, I love to prank my friends and do catch them while they sleeping. She be sending me pictures of her catching her friends sleeping. Like, she loves weed too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's my biggest supporter. You know what I mean? Like, I used to steal her joints out the ashtray. Why they had lipstick on them. Little joints have lipstick on them. I'd take them, go up and go somewhere, get a few hits out of them, throw them away type shit. You know what I mean? Like, there's me and her been through it. She been through it with me, like, and only me. Like, Chevy and my little brother, you know how they say the middle child's the menace? Middle child always getting one of it. I was really one of those. Like, trouble, smoking, girls, you know what I mean? Like, all of this shit you be, you know what I mean, getting on your son about doing too early is shit. I was one of those was kids. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, I fucking remember one time we graduated. I graduated middle school, went over to, uh, I got some weed, went over to my friend's house who lived like in a different neighborhood. It's probably like 10 minutes away. We're smoking in front of these people's apartments. And I got like a quarter of maybe like 50 on me. This is like 50 is good right now. Like no more Reggie. We moved on to the the mid, you know what I mean? We moved on to that. So I got like a quarter of that on me, smoking, rolling up. This is after I graduated, same day. My mom was at my graduation. All right, mom, I'm about to leave. Go over here. I'll be back. Boom, smoking. Next thing you know, boop, cop pull up, boom, right in front of us. Everybody immediately, like all my friends that was like next to me, like kind of just slowly just <laughs> walked off and kind of like, you know, uh, and I'm sitting there like, fuck, cop gets out the car and he's like, Is somebody, we get on the plane with somebody smoking the weed and I don't even have really time to like hide the weed or throw the weed or nothing. Sees the weed. Knows it's me, we are smoking, what you doing? Ask me how old I was, da, 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 age, da, 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 da. And I'm like, am I about to go to jail on my graduation, like for smoking weed? And he's about to, but whoever this officer was, did the best thing he could do for me and blessed this man's heart. He took me all the way home to my house. Now I still had to ride in the back seat, handcuffed, and uh, we get to my house and it's like this. My house is here. There's a side little hill. My mom's friend live up the top of the hill. We pull up to the house. My mom sees the cop car pull up to the house. And she starts walking down, see what the fuck's going on. I get out. He tell her what happened. And 
I get it, and he takes the joints off of me. We go in the house, and she's like looking at me, and I'm high as shit. She hasn't caught me red handed like high yet, right? And she's looking at me. My eyes are so fucking red. She's like, da 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 da, cussing me out. Da, da. Are you high? And I'm like, no. Like, I still lied. Like, was like, no. She was like, Scotty, you're high. Tell me the fucking truth. Like, you're high. You smell like weed. Your eyes is red. Da, da, da. And I just was like, yeah, I was smoking. Yeah, I was smoking. Yeah, I was smoking. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I was smoking. She's like, get your ass upstairs. Da, 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 da. But I'm just like, yo, like, I didn't. Went through it with my mom, you know what I mean? Like shit, like stories, like it's 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 been a you know what I mean, a roller coaster and like she's everything to me. Like she's the reason why like I just wanna do something and get something going, which is like I started my podcast to try to like, you know what I mean? Like I got a vision on changing her. You know what I mean? Trying to help change her life like bring her out to Kylie you know what I mean and be living out here closer to me type shit so it's like those are the type goals and shit I think about like trying to pay her and just you know what I mean but she loves what we does like she loves the fact we get to travel we get to meet family members sometimes and shit like that randomly that we may not have seen and shit like that but it's it's definitely dope I mean you guys came out swinging episode number one I mean, Wiz is on there with you guys. You guys are smoking, you chopping it up. Yeah. What, what's what's the podcast called? It's called St- uh, Stoned and Sexy. I like that. So the stoned is, of course, is for me and Wiz yeah. and the males and guys that smoke weed. And the sexy is the girls. You know what I mean? So they smoke weed and we kind of like, you know, we have the girl and guy. That's always going to be a topic. That's always going to be a thing. And What are you guys talking about and stuff? Literally just like personal stories situations and daily daily shit like yesterday we talked about a lot of like daily topics that you know we just thought about was was good like having like a female having a male best friend while she's dating you know what i mean like we talked about that's like, some good shit everybody's you know I mean? tuning in for that you know what i'm saying oh, man, like it sounds like trouble yeah everybody's yeah. tuning in for that the guys are tuning in and the girls are tuning in yeah it's yeah. all the shit that doesn't really get openly talked about enough. Yes. And that everybody knows there's a lot of truths to certain things, but they don't get discussed. Yes. Which is what people want to hear. Yeah. I'm, and I'm like, I'll just shit. I always kind of like wanted to do this. And people be like, you need to do this. You got a radio voice. You got to You sound like you should be. So like to dial back to how I got here is like, I was doing dash radio with, one of my homegirls that's on there with me now, her name is Shar, and my homie Ricky P. It was called The Light Show at Dash. They just let me do a show there, but I could only, I couldn't smoke. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like, uh, I couldn't do what I really wanted to do there as far as content and just be able to have a place, a home to do shit. So I did the audio shit there for a minute, stopped. Ran into Shore like months, a few months ago, and she was like, "We need to get back together and do a podcast." And like, I'm seeing she's always with her sister and her homegirl, and I kind of like love their energy. They're beautiful, they're smart, they got personality, and I just feel like that shit could work. And they're not like just some Instagram girls that you know what I mean. Like, just don't really have no value and no like. You know what I mean? Like you, you're not gonna be able to shame these ones. You're not gonna be like, oh, that, that girl. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do that with these ones. You know what I mean? They got businesses. They 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 own their own shit. Like got perspective. Yeah, they got perspectives. Yep. They own some shit called Black on the Block. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's like a big like vendor event like that they throw down. Uh, I forget what part of LA it is, but they throw it like every few, like every twice a month type shit. But it's super super dope. People just come by party different type of vendors bring be, uh have shit there but um and then i seen her and she was like we should do this and i was like you're right and then i linked up got a few people lined up camera guy equipment all the things you need and we shot like a little test run just to get the vibe and see how shit goes and those were like the few early clips that you've seen me post on my page mm-hmm. now it's like a test run but we had a few things that we just wanted to like, let's just put this out here, let people see us doing it. 
So it won't be like, oh, where'd this come from type shit. It's like, okay, y'all see us working on it and getting it together and building it. And then um, the other day I was like trying to plan shit and push it together. And I posted one of the uh, demo uh, stories on my uh, reels. And then like Wiz calls me out of nowhere. And I'm like, yo, he's like, yo, he's like, man, I see you doing a podcast thing. He was like, look, he was like, I'm tired of going on these other ones and not being able to be like, com- not being able to be comfortable and say what I want to say and have to stick to this. And he was like, I want to be unhinged. He's like, I want to be able to say what the fuck I want to say. And I don't give a fuck who don't like it type shit. He was like, I see what you're doing. He was like, there's no point. He was like, we're both Taylor gang. He was like, there's no point of you doing one and him doing one. Or he was saying me, him. Uh, and it looking like a competition. He was like, let me just come join y'all shit. I ain't trying to dictate. I ain't trying to run. I just want to be, have a safe space and feel comfortable about talking whatever I want to talk about type shit. And I was just like, shit, you the bro. You like one of the reasons why I'm able to even do this. So, you know what I mean? Like, even though, like, in my head, I was like ready to do it on my own type shit. But I'm I'm ready. If you gonna come on board and be just like, okay, as long as we got something structured for you, you know, a day, time, and all of that shit's lined up and you just gotta pull up, he's like, that's what he's with. So we shot the first shit yesterday. You know what I mean? We probably shoot again probably next week or something until we get like a flow. If you wanna shoot twice a week, speed it up or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's turning out good. I think it'll be dope. Cause like you said, it's not too many of that guy, girl really just popular like pod or conversation yeah talking real shit yeah it's tough shit to like get that. both demographics but that's a way to do it yeah you know and then you got to find the right people like people yeah that's what i was gonna say are you guys gonna rotate who's on it or is it gonna be i kinda- think um the girls have a they're very very busy right but i feel like once this picks up they'll be able to make this a priority and move around that and even if they can't make it there's always going to be girls there always if it's one of them two of them if it's me and Wiz and then two other guest co-hosts yeah you know what I mean girls keeps it interesting always you know what I mean there may be sometimes because I feel like once we go with this name stoned and sexy you're going to have to always have a girl there at least one yeah yeah and are you gonna it's gonna be on YouTube for when people want to look it up yeah yeah, YouTube, Stone we're getting all of that shit. Yeah. Like right now, we just made the Instagram so you can follow the Instagram, Stone and Sexy. You'll see some clips on everybody that co host page and shit like that, but we want to drive everybody to that Instagram once we do episodes and ready to launch. Uh, we'll be on YouTube. You know what I mean? We got the TikTok going. All of that good stuff is like that we're supposed to have is coming like ASAP, but we got the Instagram though for sure. You can have Chevy come on as well? Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's just, we talked about it right after the show. We was like, Wiz, <laughs> like, how soon do you think we need to get in get? Somebody else said it. And they was like, how soon do you think we need to start getting on guests? He was like, we need to start getting on them right now and start lining them up, start getting them ready. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. But the guests, I feel like it's going to be, you know, that's going to take us somewhere too as well. Uh, I was just feel like we maybe need just like one more of us. You know what I mean? Just to kind of like. Can keep it interchangeable. Get us locked in. Because the more we chemistry and we do, and when we interview somebody, it ain't going to look crazy. You going to know when I'm coming in for a question, you going to know when to ask. She going to know when to go off of you. And it's just going to make us look like we're fucking the dream team. You know what I mean? Like we know what the fuck we doing type shit. Instead of just like jumping in. Not knowing if this person is going to let the guests talk, let the guests finish. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we just got to get that. Like, guests is always going to be there for us, especially like now with Wiz. You know what I mean? Like, for me, like I said, I don't want him to have to dictate nothing. It's like, it's still going to be guests that I always wanted to bring, people I look up to, people that I fuck with, people in the game, other podcast people that's been doing it. You know what I mean? Like, we want to have those relationships and not like everything else where it's just like some people separate it. Oh, you could never come on my shit. 
why not? We're both like right here. Why can't we interview yeah. each? Why can't we yeah. meet up and see if we can go up a little higher together? You yeah. always will. You know True what I mean? Collaboration. You always will. Yeah. That's a funny thing with people that want to compete and not collab. I don't, I don't truly understand that ever unless it's like, like friendly competition. Yeah, for sure. Like let's raise each other, but that's still kind of collaborating in my, you know, in my mind. Um, I want to talk about, you know, you, you guys are obviously all, all from Pittsburgh. <laughs> what was the time era? Because, you know, now if you think about, you know, the whole Taylor gang and the Wiz movement, it's L.A., you know what I mean? Like LA definitely like took you guys in. You guys all seem to have moved out here and popped off in the Hollywood scene. When did you, when did you guys decide like, yo, we're going to LA and like, did everybody go or was it just Wiz in the beginning and it you was, guys are coming out here? It was just him. He yeah. fell in love with this shit the first time he was out here. Yeah. And he was like, I want to move out here. And like for me, I wasn't out here until we was on tour. And the, we had two shows out here. Like, this is the time where we would go certain places and we would have two, three shows there. You know what I mean? L.A. was one of them. Like, we had two shows in Hollywood, back-to-back -back nights. You know what I mean? Like, motherfucking P. Diddy come on the bus. I know we ain't saying his name right now, but this is just, <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is just a story. Wait, you guys are partying with Diddy? No, this is just a story. <laughs> Wait like, a minute, hold he on. Just, he just pulled up. This is like when Wiz was like buzzing. Like he came yeah. on the bus and like it's, this story is funny to me because I'm in really involved. I'm standing on the bus and he comes down the little walkway to go to the back to say what's up with Wiz. And he looks at me and he says, I met you before. I think I know you. And I said, anybody else would have been like, yeah, 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 you know, I'm a, I said, no, I do. I never met you. Like literally, you know what I mean? And I was at the time was just like trying to keep my cool, but like, damn, like this is this nigga coming to like check, check Wiz out to see, you know what I mean? Performers, you know what I mean? He heard he's a dope artist and motherfucker coming to pay. That's what they do. Like when you buzzing and motherfuckers in the city, they might come see you. It's the same thing. When we was in New York, motherfucking Jay-Z was on the side of the shit. I didn't know he was there. We didn't know he was there. When we walked to the stage to go up on stage and look right here, this motherfucker had a hoodie on. And he was like just standing right there, like looking. He was literally, we walked past him to go on stage. And I'm like, this nigga Jay-Z's here. Watch this nigga. I'm like, yo, this shit is fucking crazy. Like people will, like back then, like, they would pull up on certain artists, like, you know what I mean? These days, it's like, it's so crazy and so much shit happening. It's just like not safe anymore. That like, shit's sad to think about. You know what I mean? Right, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, this shit's like, wow. Like, that is crazy to think that that's a whole not production like for again. someone like Jay Z to go outside the house. Oh, now. man. Bro. They got kids and shit. There's just a lot of different time periods of life, bro. <sighs> COVID really fucked up a lot of shit. Does that amp up your nervousness at all? You're about to walk on stage. You look to your left, and Jay Z's there, or Man, right before. I don't know if it did for him. I just might be something yeah. I gotta ask him. You know, this is these are things that you know what I mean. I could drop a little shit here, but it's like on a pod, on a stone and sexy. It's like there'll be days where me and him will be able to like, yo, remember? Let's talk about that yeah, memory lane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like him going down memory lane with me is going to be. You were different at the same from, place, same It's time. going to be different from any other interview podcast he's ever done, ever. I could tell that from the first episode. You it's, guys going to, it it's, it's not going to be the same shit. Like, it's, this is not what he's doing. Like, this is not what he's here for. He's here to, like, really give y'all his fucking opinion and really tell y'all how he feel. And he don't give a shit. You know what I mean? So that's where, like, we're going to dive into, like, mad stories and shit like that because he has some I has some like it's just you know what I mean good fun wild crazy can't believe it moments you know what I mean so it's all in the basket it comes with it but I feel like you know the type of people we is the way we live the way we was raised where we're from it's like God ain't gonna let nothing really happen to us like for real the way we move so if people want to tune in with what you got going on, how they find you on Instagram, how they get in contact. Uh, Instagram is Ludie Boy. Um, my what day and time are you going to be dropping Stone and Sexy? Do you guys know yet? 
Um, not really. We kind of briefly talked about locking in Tuesday for everybody and then dropping the next day, like whatever clip we have that we think is the best one on a Wednesday and Friday. So we'll drop Wednesday and then Friday. That's kind of like the rough draft of like what we're thinking right now because like you guys do, it's like in between whatever podcast is out there, it's like if it's the bottom ones or the top ones, it's like when they're not putting shit out there, I feel like that's what you you guys in the middle, that's where you guys' shit is content is floating and getting around. Boom, 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 type shit. Like if you can be there like and be constantly dropping shit, I feel like something's going to catch. Like somebody waiting on the next podcast to drop some shit. Let me go see what this stone and sexy shit. Let me go see what this first smoke of the day shit is like. Like this person ain't even dropping until next week. You know what I mean? So yeah. we all know more is better. We just trying to make sure we got everything yeah. lined up and not like like Wiz is like ready to go. Boom, boom, boom. He's like hyping <laughs> this shit up, like making me. Do we got this? Do we got this? Do we got this? Light Do we got fire. this? And I'm yeah. just like uh like, okay, this shit is turning into a thing, but this is what I wanted to do for me because it's just like Get for ready. years I never really that's why I was asking questions too yeah. like Mike's that's why I'm like getting y'all opinion that's why I'm like I'm here like I'm here to ask look around wonder you know what I mean all of that type shit because I know and he said it too he said the reason why I haven't really gotten podcasts is because he knows it's a lot of work mm-hmm this is what's his exact Because he words. does media. You know what I mean? And I you think- You go to a photo shoot or a fucking music video shoot for one day and you're like, I don't want to do that shit for a, a, like a, a while. Yeah. Because it- and, and that's probably even more work. Oh, yeah, you got to be on the podcast. back side. Like, and it's all about you specifically. There's no guest or co-host or none of that shit. Well, it also- so I can't imagine like the grind that goes into all that shit. It also, it'll definitely make you be like, yo, I'm good on this for a while. Like, I, I don't want to keep doing this just, shit. You know, he finally has the time because if he commits to it, if he tells me he wants to do something, he's he's going, he's he's locked in. You know what I mean? Even if he was to be like, okay, I'm cool. I'm gonna go. I'm a. I'm gonna just fall back. On, you know what I mean? Like by that time, I'll have the eyes and I'll be able to. Oh no, it's gonna bump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like bump. A lot it of doesn't pros, even so matter which like, way it goes. Taylor now. is a global movement. You know, like, it's like all you got to do is be consistent at yes. that point. That's literally the formula: consistency, showing up. You guys are already cool as hell. You already got a, a dope ass network, and your concepts and creativity are on the next level. So that I, we're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that as a fan. You know, and just to be able to check in, oh, watch it man. grow, man. Um, I appreciate y'all. Same. Having, you know what and I mean? And speaking of like locking in, <laughs> one thing I got a lot of respect for Wiz on. Um, and that I think the whole community does is he's now uh, on the front end of being an active stoner with the fighting oh, and the yeah, working yeah. out and the health. Great. How did that kind of come? I see the whole group getting on it now. And what's kind of cool is uh, like just being a person that would get on that and start taking that serious. You can see how it affects your friends and the people around you, how, how positive that gets. Like we're going to hit the gym right after this. I got to get my man in there. Well, I've been in there back, every day with him, you know, and, mm, and I got to get back cool down to fight because weight. it's such a big impact, man. Like, and, and I, I've always, you know, I've always respected where I'm like, damn, this guy's a professional athlete or damn, this guy's a fighter or damn, this guy's a, you know, anything right here. And he smokes weed all day, every day. That's just impressive to me. Cause like, you know, the stigma is lazy stoner. You always. know, you don't do shit. I love you don't got shit going on. All you do is sit around and smoke weed. And he's really like <coughs> pioneering now that stigma of like, yeah. nah, I'll, I'll beat your fucking ass. Like oh, I'm in here training tie. hard. Like <laughs> yeah. all of know? that shit, the 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 kickboxing, the Muay Thai shit, that stemmed from Lonnie and Breeze, the security. They, you know, like in our days, like we used to go to the club and they used to like we get in the fights, like they them two big motherfuckers, like they would fuck people up, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally fuck people up. So, to me, it was funny because in hindsight, it's like now they're getting paid and they have kind of like permission and green light to fuck somebody up if they cross the line with him. 
So they start getting into that shit, start training. Them two start training. Lonnie and Bree start getting into it more. Boom, boom, boom. And once he sees something and he wants to do it, he's going full throttle with it. Locking in. No matter like what it is. Like, no matter yeah. what it is. Podcasting. Like, and yeah. he got in there with them. They got him right. He started working out. Boom. And that's when those pictures on the internet, like that one time when he was like hella, hella swole, that was like at the peak of like him working out every day, him doing the kickboxing, him just doing it for fun because like he... That's how he is when he want to do something. You know what I mean? He'd lock in, do it. Even with bowling. Like, we was fucking bowling every motherfucking day. The bowling alley would be down the street. We'd be at the bowling alley at 12 in the afternoon. We start realizing you need your own bag. You need your own shoes. You need this. This is how the real bowlers do. Okay, let's get all of that shit. And when we ain't got shit to do, we all going down the lanes. And we're going to bowl for about two hours. Then later tonight, when it's an event there, we're going to come back like we wasn't there and be bowling good as fuck. You know what <laughs> I mean? Awesome. Like, we all was like, that's he he be locking in. Like, he makes everybody do that. Like, he was like my size at one point. You know what I mean? And he blew the fuck up. And I'm like, yo, skinny niggas really do get big as fuck when they work out. Like, and it happens instantly. It's not like a year it may be like in the first two months, you might notice like this is not a skinny motherfucker no more. You know what I mean? Like, and if you're consistent, you're eating right. He was doing all of that shit, like to the T, like, you know what I mean? Smoothies twice a day, whatever, eating this, eating that, what do meal preps. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. All he had to do was get into it. He got the money to get whatever the fuck he, you know what I mean, need yeah. else to add to it. But, yeah, he 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 locks in like on whatever the fuck he's doing, like no matter what it is, bro. What's like, a twenty twenty four goal for Ludy Boy? Man, is for me to get this podcast stoned and sexy, off the ground, running, take care of the people that helped me do it, move out of my apartment, get something better, and just. Work on my health. Um, you been in the gym? I'm going back. I'm waiting on my LA Fitness card now. I had lost my wallet and shit was in there. My little chip that I used to scan when you go in there. You give me your phone number, big dog. Yeah, that's ain't what, no excuse, and, and bro. The, that's, what, that's what Chevy <laughs> no said. That's See, what what I deal with? See what I deal there with? Chevy no just said this dog. shit, though. I <laughs> Let said me that. know. I'm going to be calling Listen, you like, yo, you hit the gym today? Chevy was like, because our shit now, my house is here. There's probably like an LA Fitness right there. Oh shit! You got so no he be excuse. going there walking. Now he started the year off. He goes every day. He walks and goes to the gym. And he was like, "Nigga, why aren't you going to the gym?" And I was like, "Same thing." I said, "Man, I lost my joint." He said, "That ain't no excuse." And I'm like, oh, "Man, you got good people around." You. I just gotta go. <laughs> oh, I just gotta walk over there. I gotta act like I got Do it. Do it first thing in the morning. Go bro. over there. Be like, "Yo, boom! How do I?" Because it's probably still taking money. It's taking money out of my motherfucking For sure. shit oh, yeah. still. You know what I mean? I didn't call and cancel nothing. Da, you da, give da, them da. your phone number. They you know can give you I mean? a new card. Yeah. See, now that I know that, probably, what's today? Tuesday? Yeah. Probably tomorrow you'll see a video of me going to the gym. Man, I'm not. I'm These gonna last check two in with days have been like a lot. So tomorrow I'm oh, going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go to the gym. He goes early. So I don't really like to be... Big brother, little brother at the gym together. Like, so. <laughs> Man, get in I'm there, a, big dog. Go, You're going to need a spotter, bro. No. Uh, he yeah. can't. can't be. <laughs> like, like, you no. know there's some things, y'all know, y'all feel me. There's some things you just can't do with your siblings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he leaves early, and I'm going to wait for him to come back. I'm going to be dressed, and like I'm going to go. Team. <laughs> and I'm going yeah. to go and they probably going to think this motherfucker then came and went yeah. because like it was like you in here bro you know, wasn't you just nah i come back with no two days <laughs> yeah it's the same guy <laughs> but yeah I'm going to wait for him to come back but now that I know that in my head I think I was being like my birthday's in October I'm a Libra they say we procra procrastinate a lot so it's like in my head that was like the little thing I was using to procrastinate on going but you, Chevy, saying this back to back days in a row. This was just yesterday. It's a sign, you said bro. It. I need to be. That's you look in good shape, but I mean, I'm, I'm always going to. I'm always going to. I'm always going to have, and that's what I think. Been 
getting me by. I always had this look since I was 14. Like I had one of those spurts where I grew this height at 14. So I was like six foot at 14. I started being taller than all my brother's friends. Women are tripping. Being better than them in basketball and shit, starting to get picked when it came to getting picked and stuff like that. So I always had this like athletic look, but when I took this hoodie off and you know what I mean, I lay in the bed with the ladies. I didn't got it. I didn't got the hard news from a lady. Like laid on my elbow and be like, "You need to get some meat on your bones." Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, "Okay, that's the shit. I can't. I, I, I it, it hits me and it bothers me and it'd be like, fuck. Man, you need to start like figuring out how to work out consistently and do something to make you gain weight. Because I don't know if it's the weed, but me gaining weight is hella hard. My highest I ever been was like 185 and I was incarcerated. I wasn't smoking weed. Like, so I was like. Were you working out? Not really. Basketball, just doing cardio shit. Like I always did that. Like I'll go to the gym, play some cardio. Like I'll go to the mountain, do some little hiking, go to uh, running or some shit like that or do something. I try to stay active other than just the simple like working out but i need to do that because i'm not always going to go play basketball you know what i mean but i can always go to the gym yeah you know you'll get hungry when you start lifting weights and working out automatic you're gonna need food you're gonna need more fuel and so you'll just get hungry and then yeah get on and the i used to think and I, and, and I used to think and i had to cut you off like i watched wiz do the working out thing i used to think like okay get up go to the gym work out and then eat but he was like nah think he like you need to eat a little something before you go for that fuel to give you that energy and i'm like oh shit okay all right cool i got it now like the protein and all of that shit like that you know what i mean getting in that's where I got to tap in at, like, making sure I'm doing that right. Pack will be on just, you. Just get, in, <laughs> just get in there first, and everything else will fall in line, bro. Step by step. What's your favorite thing smoking? You, you got a favorite strain or something that you like smoking on recently? Man, it's a blue hashish, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, I wait till this shit really come back full circle. You're going to remember me saying this. This shit he got, we don't have it today. He got a few. These are, these are good, but the one he, that I really think it's going to make a difference that I want to use. I don't have right now. It's called lemon zest. But that and, of course, like Khalifa Kush is always going to be, that's like a cliche to me. Like, mm-hmm. of course, that's like it for me. You know what I mean? But, like, I can't just be like, yo, let me get some, let me get two zips of KK. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, to smoke, like. That shit will take a few days, you know what I mean? I ain't got I'm I don't got time to wait two days. I don't have access to it all the time. And of course if I'm around him and he got a bag in the studio, like, yo, let me get a little bit to roll. Of course, boom, 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 boom. Whatever the case may be. But like me and him been locked in for like since my birthday party, which was in October, I turned forty. Like <laughs> he sponsored the party. We had he rolled up like hundred and fifty uh pre rolls of the lemon zest. And we had jars of the lemon zest with me and his uh, art, me and his shit on it. Because I wanted all of my close friends, it was private, I wanted all of them to smoke that weed and try it. And everybody was fucking loving it. Like, yo, like, what is that? Da, 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 da. So I just been on that. And just, you know, I run into a few people that got some shit here and there. But I don't really like to go from flavor, 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 flavor. You pick something and stick with it for a while when you like it. Yes, I do when I eat something. Do you remember when Burner first came around? Oh, man. That's something I did want to ask. Oh, man, dude. I remember Burner used to bring flavors. Flavor, flavor, flavors. It is funny because we used to, like, crack on Burner, like, joke on him, like, about trolling them as a friend like you would bring these all these different flavors of weed around like all of them all of them all of them it used to be like and every time we would smoke them we would just go to sleep it was like way more sleepier than a kush weed like the cookies and all of that shit like that like all them beginning flavors before they hit the bags it's like he would bring them in ziplocs shit written on them like, yo, try this. I got this this time. I got this this time. I got this this time. Got this. Like, me and my homie Lonnie, 
Lonnie was like, all right, you roll two, I roll two. And I was like, all right, cool. We in the studio with Wiz. Burner brings some shit by. He got some cookies. And he's he smoke his two. I smoke, I'm smoking my two, smoking my last one. And I look over like 30 minutes later, and Lonnie is sleeping in a chair. He's knocked out. And I'm like, we all just labeled that type of weed. We was like, man, Burn got that sleepy weed, like. We don't want none of that sleepy weed. Like we, <laughs> we is cool. Like we're cool off the OG Kush we got, this sour we got. You know what I mean? This headband we may have, this OG Kush. Like we're cool off of this. Like we got burnt can have the flavors. We was like, we was always like, okay, but you know what I mean. Some of us took the shit all the time. You know what I mean? It was, shit was fire. You know what I mean? But. It would put you down. It would put you fucking down, like, for a minute. You know what I mean? Burn was, like, hella, hella dope. Like, he came around with the weed. Then it was, like, with the music. He did the one thing. I think he brought, like, a weed playing out on stage. We I'm, talked about that. We did an episode with him, and I talked about that. I was like, bro, the first thing when I really started taking note of him and what he was doing was because Wiz went in there, and he put him on, like, the amber ice or some shit, like, some type of wax. That amber ice shit was next. Had him hitting it out of, like, a bong, like, Level. all types of shit. Yes. I was we like, bro, love that shit. Going like, crazy. We fell in love with the amber ice. Like, we would sprinkle on that shit on the weed, hit it on a bong, put it on top of the weed, hit it. Oh, my goodness. You talking about head, rush, head high. Oh my goodness! Amber Ice was insane. Like that I, was a I feel like that moment. same trip was when he brought the big plant on the stage at the show, which Legend, was nuts. Legendary. No one had ever really did that. Legendary moment. Well, maybe they did, but when Burn did I that, Burn was the plug. Yeah, he's the he was the plug. Legend. I mean, he he was the one who was able to take the streets, those strains from Sherbinsky, from Jigga, from all those guys, and be like, let me get them in other people's hands, right? Because there's always that disconnect. He didn't have yeah. that disconnect. It's dope, man. Nah, Burn and he be and he was smoking that shit too. Burn love that weed. He love that weed just like us. So it's like we all just like as stoners and just in love with weed and different weed and. Listening to him school us on, like, he was schooling us on what is popping now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. like, we do, it wasn't like we didn't believe him. We just was like, that shit good, but we ain't, we wasn't, we wasn't like always, like, for a minute, it was like, okay, we got this burn, cool, boom. But then when niggas got something else, it was just like, okay, we got something else and we're going to keep the burn on the side. You know what I mean? At this time, ain't nobody fucking know this shit was about to be like, all these years later, the thing now, you know what I mean? So it's like, he definitely was, I feel like Bernard was like almost like eight to 10 years ahead of this shit. Like just sure. like Wiz. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally. So it's crazy. They like, come together and just amplify. With the weed. exactly bro. what happened. And he's a good dude. You know what I mean? Like, and on that part, like imagine like going from an artist calling you to bring him some bud and then you do you you doing your music thing on the side and they be like, We're gonna sign you. It's crazy. And now still touring. You know what I mean? And now really spin it and have the largest uh kind of empire yeah. of cannabis in the whole country. <laughs> yes. As far as like MSOs, yeah, no one's bigger. Bro, those you know, it, it, there really isn't. Like if you took an evaluation, that brand is the evaluation. It's it's unbelievable to what, Man, what that he turned took into. those little bags right. he was bring, bringing us in. He turned that shit onto something because he loved flavors. So he took what he loved and just really just sprinkled it all on the fucking world and just was like, okay, I'm putting this shit out there. Flavors is it. All the OGs and stuff and stuff was cool, but these flavors is what's about to be in. You know what I mean? And, and now you look at it, it's just like, my fuckers be looking like this on OG Kush. Like, they look down on it and be like, man, look at that shit out of here. That shit ain't nothing. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Because it, you know what I mean? The motherfucker like burn. That shit's crazy. The flavors. That shit's I wild. mean, cookies, when cookies hit, there was very few things like that. You know, that to, even to this day. Too. Man, that shit was There's the not much sleepiest like that. fucking weed ever, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah, you good girls got cookies. bunch badge. of that or two joints <laughs> of cookies and you just chilling, you're not going to be up, bro. And I'm an active smoker. Like, I like to be doing my shit, smoking, smoke before, go do some shit. Like, same way Wiz is. It's like, 
when I hit that, it's just like I can't do shit. Like I'm gonna be sleep somewhere. Like I experienced it. I've been to it. I know what it is. I know what's up. Type shit. Like that's that. That's for me. You know what I mean? I know there's people out there that love that shit. So he 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 fucking killing it now. He like you said, one of the biggest shit that's fucking out there right now, bro. Crazy. And he still has passion for it. He shows up. He's got his lunchbox. He opens that thing up and he's got a bunch of head stash flavors. And he, we interview hundreds of people. We see so much flour. And so he's got the head stash stuff. We're like, oh, oh, okay. Yep. Yep. All like the every time. Sure. Yeah. Bro, that's how he used to come with us. It was just like he would only have plastic bags, the Ziplocs of the weed, and be like, yo, I got this. This, this, oh, try this little shit of this. This new shit, this, try this. Oh, <laughs> Wiz, I got this for you. This is special. Like, you try this. He always did that. Like, always. You know what I mean? So that shit is like, motherfuckers don't be giving that credit. I don't think that's really out there. I don't really think we going to get burned as flyers. Like, you got Flavors. him on the stone and sexy. Yeah, we, sure. we definitely yeah. going to yeah. get him on and there. And Will, like, too. We, I want to see yeah, Will yeah, on you there. You need to get Will listen, on there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening. My, <laughs> my goal is is for you guys and everybody else, the people out there, is to really get to know these people besides of what you know they did. Touring. Oh, he worked with Wiz. Oh, he did this. What else do you people want to know? Like, and yeah. we can, we got a lot of shit that we can dive back in on and talk about and just bust it up and give dialogue and tell stories. Like, there's plenty of that. Like, you know what I mean? Burns going to be on there. I ain't, I'm going to have everybody on there that I can that I played that part in this shit like that. That's, that's kind of like going to be my goal the way I do my guests is to go to the people that played a part. Because I want the people early that's tapped in to know everybody involved and then probably get into the other guests that we know, friends, artists, whatever the case may be. Because I'm big on that. And like, this is some shit that I'm starting and that's how like I see it. Like, I feel like people want to know what the fuck Will been through. hundred percent. There's a manager, there's people out there trying to do the same thing he's doing. Connect and relate to different. You know what people. I mean? Like if he yeah. could break some shit down and talk to us and talk to me for an hour or two, and we just busting it up, smoking. It's like he don't even. That shit is important. You know what I mean? It's just like we're getting to the point. It's like we can't really. What we're gonna do with these stories and these shits and this information and shit we know? It's just like why not have a vibe and build something with the people and. Try to see what the fuck you can do. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like my angle. This part, I'm trying to get everybody on there. Definitely Burn for sure, though. You know, Burn got a few stories, shit he been through. You know what I mean? So it gives hope that I can still be close with people I came up with. That's that's how I look at it, too, with what you guys got going on is like, that's rare. That's super rare. And for people to see that, that it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they've been through shit. And I'm sure they bumped heads. But look, mm -hmm. look how strong that relationship is. Like, that's rare. It is definitely, yeah. you know, definitely it's, special. It's one of those brothers, like everybody's brothers. Motherfuckers didn't argue. Motherfuckers didn't tussle to here and there. You know what I mean? Like, there's been those moments. You know what I mean? And those situations make y'all better you know what i mean like as long as y'all communicating everybody's here for the same reason you know what i mean make sure he get here he get here he's safe we do your job you do your job and we good like we gotta be professional we gotta be business like we talk about it all the time like this shit some people look at it and be like it's us and be like on and they be like can i do this Sign me or do this with me or do this with like this shit is a business like Taylor gang is a business like as much as I don't really be like make it like just blatantly like yo this is a fucking business like you only could do like this shit is really a business when it come down to it so you can't just be like oh I'm gonna sign this person because you my friend or I'm gonna bring you on board because you my cousin's cousin. You know what I mean? Like, the shit don't work like that in this type shit. Like, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, shit has to make sense. You going to school for it, 
and Taylor Gang's already a thing. You going to school for communication, computers, tech, da, 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 da. Okay, boom, holla at me, nephew. When you're done with school, come check me out. That's what you should be trying to do. Like, oh, shit. My cousins, cousins work for Taylor Gang. If I go to school for this, pretty sure if I had some info, I'll be at a least we would be able to listen to you and pay it some attention instead of just being like, let me get this or let me come on board and do this and da, 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 da. So I feel like some people don't be like realizing that part of it. Like they think it's just like- You got to show results. Yeah. Take action. Show you're committed and shit. Because with, I mean, I mean, how many people was like, I'll do anything. Mm-hmm. That ain't the approach. That, that. You need to have a vision. You need to know what you want. Man, you want to hear real quick? I was doing a meet and greet in Chicago. And at this time, Wiz has no assistant. It's just like Will, homies helping out here and there. And um, we throwing a meet and greet in Chicago. And this kid comes up. It's his turn to go meet Wiz. And I turn around. I was like, yeah, give me a phone. And he gets up there. He shakes Wiz's hand. He says, Wiz, I'll do anything to come work for you. Like, I'll quit my job right now to come work for you. Wiz was like, huh? For real? He was like, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I fucking love you. He was like, he was like, uh, he was like, all right, man. And I think somebody took the kid's number. I don't know who it was. Two weeks later, this kid was on the road with us as Wiz's assistant. Wow. That's crazy. He needed somebody bad, huh? He was like, yo, fuck it. I'll like, take it. And I was just like, who, yo. Who, who was it? It's this guy named Sean. His, I forget his last name, but his, his name is Sean. Like, I forget who he's working for now. But, but it like, worked. It, it worked out for him. Like, him asking and saying that. If he would have never said that, he probably would have never even thought about it. But it's just like I said, the timing of him saying that Wiz not having nobody will at the point where he's fucking tired of carrying shit and being on the computer and talking to the venue person and making sure Wiz eat and making sure Wiz got this. Yo. Doing it all. And it, and it fucking happened. This kid was like with us for like, a, it, was, it didn't last that long, but it was probably like, he was probably with us for like a good year. You know what I mean? But moving forward to what he what he does now like he does like something for like a rock band but he has Wiz's shit on his resume like I was Wiz's assistant for a year and he has proof and he really was and it started from a fucking meet and greet that's how I like I'm involved in the story it's just like I turn around and this kid was right there I remember him. he was a bald head motherfucker had red hair on his face and he just was like, yo, he was super excited to see Wiz. He was just like, I will quit my, I will do anything. I'll quit my job right now. I'll come work with you. And Wiz was just like startled by it. Like, you know what I mean? It's still like kind of like the beginning of his shit. So somebody saying they'll quit your job and they'll quit their job to come work for you. And you're at a point where you may need an assistant. It's just like, okay. Let me get this motherfucker. Like, and he didn't try all. He didn't try family members. He didn't try. You know what I mean? Like, he tried a guy from the meet and greet. You know what I mean? Try people through people. You know what I mean? And in that game, it's like you go through people as far as assistance because it's like personalities, and sometimes people start thinking this and they doing too much, and now it's like what you signed up for, you don't want to do. You know what I mean? So it's like that world, like it's hard to kind of like just stay always until you like, unless you just meet somebody that just meets every criteria and loves their job. Rare. And that's <clears throat> very rare. Very, very rare. And not too many people is going to really love being an assistant forever. You know what I mean? Like for years and years and years and years and years. You know what I mean? So it's just like, that was a crazy, crazy moment, though, for him to get that job. Ooh, shoot your shot. That's From what it teaches me. From a fucking meet and greet, though, like, actually. Crazy. Bro, like, I couldn't believe it. Like He uh, he strategized that, right? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, bro. You imagine you get he that bought call? that to me and like, yo, I'm going 
I'm a, I'm a asking for a yeah, job. Yeah, like he bought the meet and greet and probably was like, this is yeah. going to be what I'm going to just, I'm going to ask him. Like, and then it works <laughs> out. That's what's even great. You leave the meet and greet and a couple days later, you're like, or a month, Bro, you know, you're like, oh, yes, shit. Yeah, man. I'm in. On, on the tour Crazy. with us, rolling, you know what I mean? Like, I'm seeing <laughs> him I'm like, hey, this is a kid. I just turned around to get to meet you. Now he's fucking standing next to you every fucking day. You know what I mean? So that was just like, I said, that's a good thing to reflect on it's like the the kind of person he is, you know what I mean? Like and shit like that is like God sees and continue to bless us with other shit, you know what I mean, down the That's road. Like, you know what I mean? Now this motherfucker he's like I said, he's working with somebody else. It ain't in really in the hip hop industry, but these motherfuckers be torn and that's his field now, you know what I mean? Like he probably managing something by now, type shit. Because that's what that that's what usually happens. Assistants turn yeah, into once managers. You know how to do everything. Yep. You know what I mean? How like, to handle an artist? Yeah. And what they need? They and, turn into managers. Yeah. It's just like that's what you in training. That's you in shit for. Like at the end of the day, it's like you assistant, but. You got all the news, you got all the tools, all the info. It's like, motherfucker, you can be telling somebody what you know and they could be doing this shit. You know what I mean? So And listen, if you got that fire out there, you gotta get it to Looty Boy. He's got the new podcast cracking off. Get a bunch of fire in this dude's hands. Let them try a bunch of the local Man, brands. I know people out there want to get you some fire. You could not have said it <laughs> any better because I'm going to be the Cat Williams of the Wii game, okay? I'm going to be the one that's saying such and such shit is not that good. Such and such shit need to do this. Such and such, you need to, and a lot of people going to be mad, but I don't give a fuck. I have every right. I know what good weed is. I know what bad weed is. I smoked every possible era of weed you know what i mean you can't really tell me shit like i ain't trying to hear nothing about nothing else so if you really want to be like do i got that strain do i got that shit let me see where mine is at the homies is always going to tell you yes it's the fire it's the fire let me get a yes me yeah bring it over Bring it over to Stone to Sexy. You know what I mean? Let me and the best judges in the world judge it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And that would be a good segment for the show. You, give you good reviews. Tap in. Yeah. Tap in with us. If you really want to see. And I know y'all have major people like, like brands, people following y'all. So if you want to shoot your shot, we're going to give you the real. Always. We ain't going to be bullshit and we're going to give you the real deal spill. Like, I'm going to let you know. All I got to do is roll it up and I hit it three times and I hold it in my chest. Uh, if it does something to me, then you good. If it doesn't, then you ain't good. <laughs> You're not good at all. Half the people just dropped off. Yeah. So I'm going to have to hit them next run. Yeah. I'm going to hit them up next you run. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's just what it is. I'm, we tired uh, of being quiet about this. We joke about this, me and him, all the time, like, alone when we're just bullshitting in the studio. Like, bro, like, People really don't be smoking weed. Everything's just like commercial. Like, let me do this so I can post this. Like, no brands are really giving deals to the real weed heads. Why ain't you you you're only looking for that market of like that crowd of Instagram or social media? Cause this person gets this on the post, person gets this on the post, but they posting it once a month. Why not? Work something out where you probably wouldn't even have to give that person as much as you would give the rapper. You give him less, but that person is living it. It's a lifestyle for them. They're going to be showing it way more. They're going to have way more longevity. The artist is doing so much shit. People that's following them is following them for music. They don't give a fuck about what you smoking. They didn't come there to find out what weed you smoking. They came there to see when you drop on a mixtape. When you dropping a single, when you're going to be on tour, blah, 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 blah. But everybody's so caught up in that look. Let me get this. Put this in there. But it's, it's all a real good. game you just gave. It's, it's, it's all good. I've been peeping for a long time, and I've been quiet. I've just been, like, watching shit. And these are, like, my views on shit, like the rapper weed thing. Like, I've been around rappers. Like, they don't really smoke like that, like. 
So why is it why is their weed so high priority than this motherfucker right here that got some fire shit and been and everybody in the street know his shit? You know what I mean? Like we call this shit rapper weed. Like them motherfuckers don't be smoking like that, man. Like quit. Let's let's do that. Let's cut that off. Let's just say rappers. Rappers smoke weed. Not rapper weed. Rappers smoke weed. I think that's better. Cause Rapper weed, I don't even know what that really means because I don't want that. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. Like, if somebody gave me something and was like, yo, this was rapper weed and it was good, I would sit here and be like, yo, I smoked some rapper weed. That was fire. But it's like, I don't really know what rapper weed is. I have yet to have one. I have you know yet I mean? to have one. Yeah, you got to live it. And and that's what's been refreshing, man, is we get to sit down with people like you and we get to actually talk passion. Oh, Your man. journey and you really live this weed shit. You really love it. You really smoke. Um, and you also are passionate about having everyone around you smoke fire too. Uh -huh. Like I can tell it's like, yo, try this. Yo, you seen this yet? I can just tell by the way you show stuff off. It's uh it's a blessing for us to be able to sit down with people like you, man. It really is. Nah, you don't y'all don't even know in the inside. I'm like boom 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 boom. But this is like what I've like w always wanted to do. Like, you know what I mean? Come sit down with people that got their shit going and just talk weed and stories and shit like that. So like, I appreciate y'all, you know, penciling me in, getting me up here, us getting knocking this out. Like, this is big for me you know what i mean now i could be looking on y'all shit like yeah i was on that motherfucker man. <laughs> you're part yeah, of the yeah. family like, now yeah, i was yeah. at that table right there man like look at this like but yeah like and then like it just i just feel like you never know like motherfuckers see this and be like this and be like yo blah, 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 blah. it's like we're going this ain't gonna be the end of us just you know what i mean networking and trying to figure out some shit I may be hitting y'all up and maybe just doing like interviews with other podcasters type shit, like guests, like people that do their thing that brought me on, you know what I mean? Like motherfuckers don't be like, yo, reach out to Ludi and bring him on. It's always like another angle. Let me do this or this. How did this work? Whoop -de -whoop. Okay. It's like, all right, I'm done ignoring that. I'm like going to address it. Like, okay, if you ain't get me, you got to go out about the other way, another angle. You ain't here to be like, Ludi, what does it cost to get you? Or can you come do this and pull up? I'll give you this. We will do whoop. I don't really give two shits about it. If it ain't about the stone and sexy and it ain't about me and my family and what I got going on, I'm really ignoring it and not giving a fuck and saying something. Like, I'm normally quiet and calm and chill, but I'm I'm just done. I that Cat Williams, honestly, just it, <laughs> she <laughs> said it got everyone in mode. Ah, that's funny as well, well. Don't don't hurt him too bad. I'm one of them though. I'm one of them people with the Cat Williams. Yes, it, it affected me. Like it may it not affected me, but it just added more fuel to how I was thinking about bringing this year in anyway. Being more vocal, saying my truths, not really saying nothing crazy, but just saying my truths and my story. That's all. Yeah, that's really it. As everything you should, I said bro. is true. Yeah, as you should. That's really it. Lived a hell of a life, and um, you guys continue to, and, and I'm excited for your new project. I think it's gonna be really dope. Oh, I like man. the name, I like the concept, and you know, just by sitting here and talking with you today, I already know you're gonna be great at it. So, no, nah, and dope. too, man, y'all see this shit? Any clips y'all see that go up that I post? Text me on the side, yo, Ludi. You should try this. Anything, you know what I mean? 100%. Like, I'm here for that too. Like. Wiz is gonna move fast, but I'm learning as I go with this shit. Like on what, 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 what how to move, boom, 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 layout. Da, 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 da. Yep. I'm doing that shit on as I go. So it's like I may text you and be like, "Yo, what's up with this? Like this dude trying to charge me this? Like, did, like just you know what I mean? Just like really, just genuine, just questions and feedbacks because I'm trying to like really learn. You know what I mean? And most people, like we said, like nobody wants to like grab this person and be like let's do i'm gonna tell you this da, 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 da. any questions let me know like i give you like people are not like that you know what i mean so it's just like we've learned that too and that's the only way we got this far is that people open their door and be like yeah let me help you guys you know we got consultants we got mentor like we i'm i'm a big believer in all that mm -hmm. i don't try to uh 
you know, go down the path alone. I'm always looking for guidance, you know? So, and that's how it, we know it, you'll it, be it's, successful. It's, 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 it's rewarding to be able to help somebody too. Yeah. That's like the whole purpose of life. In my opinion is like, it ain't about making money. It's about <sighs> who, how many people you can help, how much value you can spread, you know? Um, that, that's the most rewarding feeling in the world to me, you know? So we're definitely, man, we're definitely going to check in on you on the gym too, big dog. Make oh, sure you yeah. get that card situated. Yeah. Oh, brother, I stay with Chevy. So he's going to be like, <laughs> did you yeah. go to that motherfucking gym? But I'm going I'm to I'm get my shit together. I promise you. 24, let's go, man. I'm going to get my shit together, Louis man. Boy. Gym, man. Yeah. We in the gym. First smoke of the day, man. Appreciate you guys. You already know. Like, and that's is... the most telltale sign when you know someone's going to be successful is when they go into it like a sponge. Yes. I want to yeah. learn. I want to know. Uh, I'm going to be asking you questions. It, you just know when you hear that, they're on the right path. Like right. no matter what endeavor you have to i'm not one of those i know it all even with him by my side where i know i could be like can you do find out this is just like i'm trying to get less from him i just want him to time, show man. up in time and content show and bro, prove that's another it. level you know of what growth. i mean like i want to be able to come back and be like yeah that that mic right there ain't gonna work because it is because this is that spot right there ain't cool because my homie said that i want to be able to do that you know what i mean like and be serious and show them that i'm serious about something that's the one thing i've been lacking you know what i mean i'm working on it but like really just taking charge and being like okay this if this is yours nigga you got to be the one going to go see locations new spots make sure the mic's right making sure this is you, you got to be the one getting everybody aligned and i did this so far got everybody aligned equipment guy got an editor got the girls got somebody handling like the back end and management and all that shit like that like making sure we got it, scheduling and all that shit like that instagram e uh youtube tiktok like an email, blast email, like all of that shit is done up until now. You know what I mean? We just started yesterday, so should be dope, man. You're off to a hell of a start, bro. Yeah. I hope, man. I hope. I had you got to believe. You got to believe. Oh, yeah. I ain't even going to say achieve. I hope. You know what's yeah. so crazy? That self I told, a, I told a female, I said, hope all is well. And she was like, never hope, baby. And I just was like. You might want to hang on to that one. Yeah, I was about to I say. Said, I, I, said, I was like, hell yeah. I said, I've been saying this shit wrong this whole time. Like, I've been saying hope all is well to yeah. a lot of people. When you think about it, it's like, okay, I'm going to start saying it this way now. All is well. You know what I mean? That means that's all is well. It's straight direct. It's I know. I know all is well. All is going to be well. It is well. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, all of that shit like that. That's better than hope so if you're out there saying hope all is well no more hope in 2024 all is well with everybody always all is well with you guys yo all is well man we appreciate yeah. your homie Ludy boy taylor gang tgod's mm -hmm. first smoke of the day stay on the lookout for stone and sexy yes and you already yes. know man yes We're sir out. appreciate yeah. you guys Thanks. Peace. So if you like this video and you want to see more videos just like it, I need you to click right up here and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Yo, yo, First Smoke family, right here.